having Ayush Sarab ji as chairman and as discussed right now by Nitesh ji, ki ho sakta Ayush ji ko bhi backup dena pade because Jatin Harjai ji is held up due to block of internet in Rajasthan because there is difficult situation going on in Rajasthan as we all are aware of it. So today Rohit ji will take up forward on ITC with respect to GST or Jatin Harjai ji ka jo topic tha that was recent landmark judicial pronouncements which is deferred as of now. So I now request Nitesh ji to welcome our eminent speakers and all my fellow colleagues. Over to yes, uh, thank you Saroj ji. Friends, uh, as you know that uh, Ayush ji, DS Agrawal ji and uh, uh, Banka ji, Vivek Banka ji, all three are eminent speakers of our region and both of three of them together wrote one book on GSP. So we thought that this time we should acknowledge them that by being the chairman of making the chairman of in the three VCMs, the both uh, all the three speakers. So welcome Ayush ji, uh, welcome Rohit Surana ji, who is a very prominent speaker of our region. Uh, uh, as, as already told uh, that uh, we can, uh, maybe that Venu Gopalji will be taking the session uh, instead of Jatin Harjai ji and Jatin Harjai ji will be taking tomorrow. So be ready for that. Uh, or in any case, Ayush Sarab ji is there to, uh, if, if uh, both of them are not available. Uh, so uh, one, one thing we are announcing, uh, one five, uh, five CP program on 9th of uh, July, Saturday, from 1.30 to 7. Uh, this program will be on CARO, the draft uh, FAQs, the practical difficulties, along with the draft financial statements and CARO reports. All will be discussed and uh, we will provide the soft copy also on the draft financial statements and uh, uh, CARO. Uh, that we will also uh, provide the soft copy so that it is convenient for the professional to uh, to uh, use it uh, for their assignments. Apart from that, there uh, we have called one speaker, uh, C. A. Padmasri uh, Tristo from the Mumbai. She is very good speaker. And then we have uh, one session on the recent changes on LLP friends. The, many of the private limited companies' provisions are now applicable on LLP. And probably many of us don't know uh, it's, uh, uh, the, that these provisions has to be followed to the LLP. Uh, so uh, very uh, then the reporting requirement, there has been change in the reporting requirement of LLP that will, will take care. Uh, then we have many of the, uh, the changes in the Income Tax Act that will be taken care by the uh, Ramesh Patudiyaji. So that will be a physical program. So I will request the members to, uh, to as soon as we announce it later uh, with the links. Uh, so kindly register uh, as soon as possible. With this, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you. So I now, before handing over the session to our chairman of the day, Mr. Ayush Sarav ji, I would request Girdhari ji to formally introduce Ayush Sarav ji as well as Rohit Surana ji. Over to you, Girdhari ji. Thank you, Saroj ji. It is a proud privilege to introduce Dr. Ayush Sarav, who is today's chairman. He is a practicing chartered accountant specialized in GST matters. He is doctorate and has submitted his thesis on impact of implementation of Indian IS in the financial statement of select Nifty 50 companies. He also contributed articles on the GST laws in various forums. He is a speaker on GST matter on various forums. He is also... He is also... He is also... Dr. Ayush Saraf is a practicing chartered accountant specialized in GST matter, audit and income tax. He is doctorate and has submitted a thesis on the impact of implementation of Indian IAS in the financial statements of select Nifty 50 companies. 
He is a co-author in the Practical Guide to GST Compliance, published by Taxman. Dr. Saraf is the Vice Chairman of the Gowati branch of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Dr. Saraf has been a great faculty in the Department of Commerce, Gowati University. He has also given lectures in the Commerce College and other various forums. He is con regularly contributing articles for the various tax forums. With these words, we welcome CA Dr. Ayush Saraf. Welcome, Ayush. Uh, friends, just now the Venu Gopal ji has come from. He will be there from 5.30. So, uh, Jatin Harjai ji uh, will take up the session tomorrow and Venu Gopal ji will be taking today. Thank you. Thank you, Nitish ji. Now, I am introducing CS Rohit Surana who will be taking today's session. He has become honors FCA, CS, IMMA charter holder, fintech and blockchain from SPJ and Global. He, has, he was associated earlier with DB Desai and Associates, a leading char chartered accountant firm, and also with Budger Pants. After 15 years of, of the experience in field of taxation and finance, he started his practice. And thereafter, he is growing bounds and leaps. He has the experience of more than 13 years in this, in this line after doing the practice. He is specialized in corporate restructuring, management consultancy, taxation, private equity, merger and acquisition, investment startups. He is associated with various marketing committees, MSME committees, associate editor in the Pan India Journal of GST, Chamber of Commerce, Professional House, and he is regularly attending and presenting in the seminars. With these words, we welcome C. A. Roy Surana. Welcome, C. Roy Surana, sir. Now over to Thank the you. chairman, sir. <coughs> chairman, sir. Thank you so sir. much, sir. Uh, respected uh, Sarut Swaikka, sir, uh, convener, views exchange. Nitesh Moore, sir, uh, co convener, sir, and uh, Girdhari Sarmaji, secretary of the association. At the very outset, I would like to acknowledge uh, the association for acknowledging basically our uh, efforts. It's because of your appreciations that we get the required motivation to work. Very thank you for that, sir. So coming straight to the topic. Today, we have two topics lined up now. One is ITC, that is recent issues in ITC. And second one, which has been changed now, which is Technological updates under GST, which shall be deliberated by Venu Gopal Gela. So coming on to ITC, now we shall be completing five years of our uh, implementation of the GST law. When the GST was implemented, we all uh, perceived that GST will be the enabling factor which will make this law a great success. But of late, when we started practicing the law, though I concede that there were some mistakes uh, from the side of the SSEs also, but it has been observed that the main contentious issue under GST is ITC. In the initial parts, we were only concerned about section 16.2c. We were talking about uh, 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 various case laws arise industry. We were talking about 16.4. We were talk, talking about 17.5. But now when we move forward, we see that 36.4 has come. Initially, 20% cap. Government said, no, it will be 20%. We will not make it, uh, we will uh, we'll not uh, lower this limit. But then came 10%, 5%, now zero. Now 2B has come. When 2A came, government gave an assurance that this is only an enabler just to cross-check, but it will not be used in proceedings. We have a, a clarification for that. But now no one is paying heed to those clarifications and uh, continuous notices are pouring in for the clients. 16 to AA. 16 to AA has been notified. So what is the uh, implication? 
ratification of 16 to double A in the present regime because that is covered by Article the Rule 36.4. I am sure its constitutional validity will be challenged, but that is a matter that will be taken up by courts in due course. But for the time being, we have to deal with these cases in the departmental level. And the department is giving no respite and directly giving show cause notices. Then comes issue of fake invoicing. Day in and day out, new notices are being issued. And as in when a notice is issued, the department always considers the SSC as guilty. Even if a show cause is no show cause notice is issued, it's okay. But then they go for coercive actions. ITC is blocked. Arrest provisions are there. Even if the SSC is innocent, he has to face these issues. So today, uh, uh, I understand Rohit, uh, Rohit Suranaji's work is very difficult because ITC is one of the most contentious and most uh, inquisitive issues for each and every uh, professional and even business persons. So I wish Rohitji all the best and sir, the stage is all yours for this. Uh, I hope it will be a very interactive session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, our chairman for the session, uh, Dr. Ayush Saraf. I must uh, mention uh, kudos for writing a book. I know how difficult it is to write a book. I started and have left off midway so many times. So kudos to you to complete the book and share our knowledge with the entire fraternity. Uh, respected uh, President Sarojji, uh, Views Exchange. Uh, respected uh, Sinitesh Ji Moore. Uh, respected Girdhari Ji, Surinder Ji and uh, so, so many seniors on the dais on Zoom platform. And uh, uh, my dear colleagues on Zoom platform, uh, although it would have been wonderful to meet face to face and you know interact a lot more and understand each other, I am approaching this platform with uh, kind of sharing my experience from 2017 till date as far as GST is concerned uh, on, on the aspect of input tax credit only. Uh, this is such, such a large topic and I have to start by saying this. And I'm sure uh, I would request the host to, if you can mute uh, uh, the other participants, please. Done it, sir. Done it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, I, I would like to say, you know, why GST was introduced. The basic objective of introduction of GST was twofold. One was to give away the cascading effect of taxes. You know, we, we had excise on excise. We were paying VAT. We were getting credit of VAT, not getting credit of excise. So in order to remove these cascading effects, excise, VAT, service tax was all merged into GST. So that was one of the objective. The second objective stated was that, you know, GST will provide a seamless credit scheme, seamless credit mechanism, smooth credit mechanism, so that all your input cost will be subsumed and you will pay output tax. Friends, the wording of the statute to some extent has been drafted in such a manner that this object is getting lost. Second, I would say this in open public forum that the manner in which advanced ruling has been used, advanced ruling has been implemented, that is also giving a lot of confusion and totally defeating the objective of the introduction of GST as well as the intent of the act. Uh, I will take you through some of the case laws on similar subjects. There are contradictory case laws which are present there today under advanced ruling, which is, which is not giving the right picture to an SSE or a practitioner in terms of way forward, but it is giving a lot of ideas to the department to rake up litigation issues. And I'm also starting by saying that till date, 26, 29th June, 2022, Whatever litigation you have faced so far or you have witnessed so far or my colleagues, Dr. Ayush Saraf and others have faced so far, the litigations upcoming in years to come, when the real audit of department will start, when the real investigation will start, will by far surpass all the litigations that have happened so far. I will begin by an example. <clears throat> Uh, just stay with me. Just let me know if my screen is visible. 
just read this language i'm sure this is visible section 16 subsection 1 uh, i'm i'm just reading out every registered person shall subject to such conditions and restrictions as may be prescribed and in the manner specified in section 49 be entitled to take credit of input tax charged on any supply of goods or services or both to him which are used or intended to be used in the course or furtherance of his business and the said amount shall be credited to the electronic credit ledger now i am not going into the terms and conditions right now it will come a little later on but i don't know if we professionals have come across the real meaning or import of the word course or furtherance of business therein lies the maximum litigation now i will i will take an example uh let me take couple of an examples to help you understand that why this understanding of this meaning itself is very important see when when we had excise or sendvet credit rules under service tax regime <clears throat> the word was in relation to business and to some extent courts had an opportunity to kind of define interpret the word in relation to business but a lot of litigation even at that point of time happened whether you know uh, only direct inputs will be allowed direct input services credit will be allowed indirect will not be allowed or whether only integrally or intricately related to your manufacturing process or output service will be allowed the indirect ones or the non integrated related will not be allowed now as i see the advance rulings coming in i see the same concept the same litigation the same uh, you know arguments that department had taken is still being taken here in advance ruling why because advance ruling comprises of the same set of judges which belong to the department and now the same arguments are coming again and again you i have seen cases where it is you know the advance ruling has said i will allow credit only because it is directly related and i will not allow credit on this because it is not directly related to the manufacturing process and the word direct, directly integrally intricately we has been used in the course or furtherance of business course or furtherance has never been defined in the gst act now i will take a few examples to kind of deliberate on this and so that we professionals kind of get an understanding as to why this issue will become a litigation point for future and why we need to deliberate it now so let us let us go into two examples straight away now let us take example of csr expense now let's say i i have a paint client who is into manufacturing of paints now they are required to do csr activities mandatorily as per law now they do two kind of csr activities friends one csr activity is that they will train laborers for painting so they will actually get into training of you know uh, backward classes of laborers who can actually paint so they can become contractual painters now this may be related to their business because ultimately the painter will some day become their own ambassadors in some way and use burger paints ka paint for painting their walls and thereby increasing the sales there is a chance that this might happen they carry out another csr activity where they train women from rural areas into stitching stitching of garments now friends these two are csr activities one where you can see that it might be related to the business the second it may not be related to the business now the question is whether if i am training and i am hiring somebody who is charging me professional fees for training the painters as well as the stitchers and charging gst on the same whether i am eligible to take credit of that gst whether it is in the course of or furtherance of my business now i have a simple uh, uh, law to understand this let's take a brand tata tata has become a brand not only by supplying quality goods at reasonable prices and at Uh, promise delivery times tata has become a brand because they have given a lot to the society now when you give back to the society the goodwill spreads against the society which helps your business so therefore whether you are doing csr activities for training of stitchers 
or training of painters it does not matter your brand is getting built up and it will ultimately help your business grow so for me obviously it is in the course of or furtherance of business plus there is an added element of the fact that it is mandated by law it is mandated by law that i have to do the csr activity but you see today we have two favorable cases karnataka high court in milipur india which says that it's a statutory obligation and it has got a direct bearing on manufacturing activity consider my example in the paint case therefore it should be allowed then we have another case sl propac limited which did not go into the nature of activity but said that csr expenses are essential for smooth functioning of business operations of the company hence itc is allowed we have an against case in the case of messrs adama india limited which says that it is not a normal course of business for the applicant they are into paints and you are doing stitching ka this thing and we are not going to allow this so we have a against judgment now i mean one today there is no clarification in law course of furtherance of has not been defined in law there are already contradictory judgments now what are what is an ssc supposed to do are they going to take credit and risk litigation in future or are they not going to take credit if the law comes in favor of csr they are going to lose the credit so what should one do so this is one situation that i want to point out another situation i i am a corporate house with presence in multiple cities let's say my head office is in calcutta i take a guest house on rent i develop the interiors there for my people from factories from my depots to come over stay here in calcutta whenever they come to head office so my friends the question immediately is that you know, when you do up the interiors of the guest house or when you give take, pay the rent of the guest house you pay gst on that are you eligible to take credit as per 161 or not the obvious answer would be that the guest house is not for any personal enjoyment of the employee it is for the customers to stay in it is for the employees to stay in whenever they come for business purpose of the company yet we have a advance ruling in the case of national aluminum company limited which says that this is not an activity integrally related to the business of the appellant and therefore we will not allow you the credit i mean can you imagine this i mean how how is this being done i will also give you certain examples in my due course where you will see that you know the whole idea of gst which was uh, uh, to remove the cascading effect of taxes is going out for a toss take another example in the definition of in the course of business operation now i want to ask you if anybody is willing to answer now you are a company or you are a professional you buy a television you buy a television in your office for you the use of television is that you know you have a lot of zoom meetings like what we are having right now and therefore you will use the zoom meetings on the television are, are you are you allowed to take credit of that television or not are you allowed to take credit of that television or not i i had a amazing case where you know one of my export client said that boss i want to purchase a coffee vending machine in my company my buyers come from italy from australia and i i have to serve them coffee i understand foods and beverages are not allowed to get itc but uh, will 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 that coffee machine uh, be eligible for itc should we go for advance ruling for that now can you imagine that what kind of uh, snowballing this as this whole process has started how how it is being done so the first point that i wanted to you know bring before your good self was that you know what is in the course of furtherance of business is something which we professionals have to understand i just wanted to bring you know uh, 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 one apex court judgment which was pre gst regime maruti suzuki limited which says that you know even though it is not an activity relating to business as as long as they are associated directly or indirectly related to your business it is treated as a business activity and credit should be allowed so that is the past apex court judgment 
and i still believe as a point of law that we professionals should achieve it in this manner that whether that activity irrespective of the advance rulings is helping the business in any manner if it is helping the furtherance of the cause of business or is it in the course of business itself that i think should be eligible for input tax credit however we are in for huge litigations the departments are getting trained on these advance ruling judgments and whenever an ssc will be subject to audit etc there will be huge litigations so this is the first point that i wanted to bring to your notice next is i wanted to go to the you know conditions if you if you just see the uh, conditions that have been imposed for taking credit look at these conditions uh, a a was always there you know you have to be in possession of tax invoice or debit note etc double a you know as dr ayush saraf was mentioning double a is very interesting this this has been brought uh, in 2022 uh, only 1st january 2022 uh, now double a says that the details of the invoice or debit note referred to in clause a so you should not only have the physical copy of the invoice or debit note to the details of those invoice debit note should also have been furnished by the supplier in the statement of outward supplies which is gstr1 currently and such details have been communicated to the recipient of such invoice or debit note in the manner specified under 37 so it must also reflect in my 28tv as the case may be now uh, you see the history 2017 se lekar 2000 almost 22 tak we were running on returns 3b 1 2 which was a stop gap arrangement because some other returns were supposed to come but because of technical failure they never saw the light of the day section 42 43 had to be scrapped and by a notification 3 by 3b was made a valid return and now in the act itself they are bringing कि टू ए टू बी में दिखेगा तो आपको देंगे नहीं तो नहीं देंगे इसका रूल 36 लेके आए कि नहीं दिख रहा है तो सर्टेन परसेंटेज देंगे 20, 15, 10, 5. लाइक यू नो डॉक्टर आयुष राइटली पॉइंटेड आउट कि इसका कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल वैलिडिटी तो एक अलग चैलेंज होगा कि भाई वाई वाई क्यों चैलेंज होगा मैं आपको बताता हूं वो कि एक तो मेरे पास कोई लोकल स्टैंड ही नहीं है कि मैं ये prove kar sakun ya yeah, i can take care of the fact that my supplier is making all his compliances i don't have a local standard second neither do i have a tool ki bhai i i can make him do that third you are putting the law or enforcing law between two unequals he is a supplier i am a recipient i have a different set of compliances different set of responsibilities the supplier has a different set of responsibilities fourth if supplier makes a mistake it is the duty of the department to catch him not me who has uh, uh, done everything right uh, got the material paid them uh, including gst yet they have not furnished now how this is changing the whole dynamic is ki we are actually paying the gst amount after the reflection returns lot of companies have adopted this adopted this policy thereby they are filing the gst return after this compliance has happened but this is not what was warranted when gst was issued aap dekhiye jab bhi taxation bana hai to chanakya ka law aaya hai the law is very clear that you take tax as if you suck nectar from flowers without hurting the ssc now in order to plug evasion in order to catch the offenders which are let's say 10 out of 100 you are punishing the rest 90 also so ye ye double a mein ek change inhone leke aaya ab यहाँ पे मैं आपको दो जजमेंट भी दिखाना चाहता हूं इस पॉइंट पे ऊपर कि जो टैक्स इवेजन की आयुष जी बात कर रहे थे कि यार आ, लोग तो फाइल नहीं कर रहे हैं <coughs> क्या हो रहा था टैक्स इवेजन में बताऊं मैं दो दो तरीके के टैक्स इवेजन है फर्स्ट टैक्स इवेजन जो ऑलरेडी हो रहा है वो ये है कि आ, लोगों ने फेक इन्वाइस दिए हैं 
लोग टू ए टू बी में दिख रहा है फिर भी पता चल रहा है कि शेल कंपनी है फेक इन वॉइस दिए हैं टू ए टू बी में भरा ही नहीं अभी दो जजमेंट आया है एक ऑनरेबल मद्रास हाई कोर्ट का एक ऑनरेबल कैलकाटा हाई कोर्ट का अब मैं आपको ऑनरेबल कैलकाटा हाई कोर्ट का जजमेंट का एक पैराग्राफ पढ़ के पढ़ता हूँ विच इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड रेलिवेंट इट सेज दैट अपॉन कंसिडरिंग द रेलिवेंट डॉक्यूमेंट्स दैट ऑल परचेजेज एंड ट्रांजेक्शन इन क्वेश्चन आर जेनुइन एंड सपोर्टेड बाई वैलिड डॉक्यूमेंट्स and transaction in question were made before the cancellation of registration of those suppliers and after taking into consideration the judgments of supreme court and high court the order and in the event of the petitioner shall be given the benefit of itc which means the court interpreted that despite everything if the transactions are genuine if the documents are in order then the recipient cannot be penalized and they had given the effect of itc to them similarly madras high court held that the recipient cannot be held responsible for the fault of the supplier in such a case supplier should be ordered to pay the tax instead of taking the rightful claim of input tax credit of the recipient ho kya raha hai supplier ne kaand kiya he is vanished he is gone he is no longer traceable the recipient is genuine he is genuinely doing his business He is in existence, and you catch him. This is neither the tenet of taxation. This is neither the object with which GST law was formed. This is totally taking away. Now, one thing is me. Or nikal gaya. What happened after the fake invoices was two A two B me dikh raha hai. Humne credit le liya. पांच साल बाद आपको समझ में आया कि ये बंदा शेल कंपनी था आपने रिट्रोस्पेक्टिवली उसका रजिस्ट्रेशन कैंसिल कर दिया आज हम तो सारा चीज राइट कर रहे थे टू ए टू बी में दिखा हमको हमने क्रेडिट सारा लिया अब आप रिट्रोस्पेक्टिव उसका कैंसिल कर रहे हो और आप मेरे से वो ले ले रहे हो अगेन दिस न्यू क्लॉज इज बींग इंसर्टेड अगेन विच इज आप देखोगे बी ए बी ए बी ए का मतलब है द डिटेल्स ऑफ इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट In respect of the said supply communicated to such registered person, मतलब two A two B में दिख गया. Under section thirty eight has not been restricted. ये बड़ा interesting provision आ रहा है. ये interesting इसलिए आ रहा है कि अब आपका two A two B को भी revise करेंगे ये लोग. एक नया format आएगा. जिसमें ये दिखेगा कि हाँ सामने वाला नहीं भरा है. लेकिन फिर भी हम आपका restrict कर रहे हैं. For so many other reasons. इसको थोड़ा सा अपने आराम से समझते हैं. Because ये ये this will become a ब्रीडिंग ग्राउंड ऑफ लिटिगेशन इन इयर्स टू कम अभी देखिए ये चेंजेस नोटिफाई नहीं हुआ दिस चेंजेस वर प्रपोज इन बजट बट नोटिफिकेशन इज नॉट कम टू ब्रिंग इन हियर बट लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड दीज चेंजेस की ये चेंजेस क्या कर सकता है देखिए पहले सेक्शन सिक्सटीन टू सी क्या बोलता था कि भाई सब्जेक्ट टू दी प्रोविजन ऑफ सेक्शन फोर्टी वन द टैक्स चार्ज इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ सच अप्लाई हैज बी पेड टू दी गवर्नमेंट आपको क्रेडिट मिलेगा सेक्शन फोर्टी वन बहुत क्लियर था सेल्फ असेसमेंट टैक्स ऑन योर ओन एस्टिमेशन आप क्रेडिट ले लो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक रेस्टोरेशन ले लो 42 जो मैचिंग प्रिंसिपल था वो कभी अप्लीकेबल ही नहीं हुआ बिकॉज द रेलिवेंट फॉर्म्स ही नहीं आए तो हमारा एक पॉइंट तक चला कि भाई आप अपना सेल्फ असेसमेंट में जो बुक्स में दिख रहा है वो ले लो उसके बाद जो आया वो ये था कि भाई हम परसेंटेज uh, देंगे आपको कि भाई जो बुक्स में दिख रहा है बट टू ए में दिख रहा है उसका डिफरेंस हम 20 परसेंट ही आपको लेने देंगे फिर 10 परसेंट तो ये लोग प्लग करते गए वो लूप को कि भाई आपका बुक्स में ज्यादा है टू ए टू बी में कम है तो डिफरेंस में आप और कितना ले सकते हो तो वो करते गए अब ये लोग जो प्रपोज लेके आ रहे हैं वो ये लेके आ रहे हैं कि 41 में आप सेल्फ एसेस करो सॉरी फिर वही हो गया सर नवीन जी कैन यू प्लीज अम्यूट योर सेल्फ यू आर कंटिन्यूसली अनम्यूटिंग योर सेल्फ शुड वी प्रोसीड यस सर ओके सो नाउ नाउ जो 41 में जो चेंज लेके आया है वो इन इफेक्ट क्या बोल रहा है द क्रेडिट ऑफ इनपुट टैक्स अवेल्ड बाय अ रजिस्टर्ड पर्सन अंडर सब सेक्शन 1 मतलब पहले जो सेल्फ असेसमेंट आपने किया द टैक्स पेएबल वेयर ऑन हैज बीन not been paid by the supplier shall be reversed along with applicable interest matlab kya hai ki 2a 2b mein dikha but usne galat use kiya ya government ko cash jama nahi diya 
वट एवर एज है रिवर्स्ड अलॉन्ग विथ इंटरेस्ट नाउ इसका एक एक उदाहरण आप समझिए मैं जनवरी में टू ए बी में टू में दिख रहा था मैंने आईटीसी ले लिया अप्रैल में जाके पता चला कि नहीं वो जो सप्लायर है उसने गड़बड़ किया फॉर सम रीजन ही हैज एक्चुअली नॉट पेड टैक्स टू दी गवर्नमेंट ही हैज यूज फ्रॉडुलेंट मींस और वट तो राइट फ्रॉम जनवरी टू जून का ना केवल आईटीसी रिवर्स होगा बट मेरे को उसके ऊपर इंटरेस्ट भी देना होगा ठीक है इन्होंने एक वो लीवे दिया है कि सप्लायर जब उस एनोमली को करेक्ट कर देगा तो आपको रेट लेने दे देंगे बट हाउ हाउ आर वी गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू आवर वर्किंग कैपिटल साइकिल एक एस अपना वर्किंग कैपिटल साइकिल कैसे करेगा जब आई टी सी फॉर दी मंथ ही उसका श्योर नहीं उसका सर्टेन नहीं उसके बाद रूल थर्टी सिक्स फोर तो आप लोग जानते ही हैं कि वन ट्वेंटी वन टेन वन जीरो फाइव वो सब लेके आए फिर वन परसेंट कैश में देना पड़ेगा वो सब लेके आए ऑल ऑल दैट स्टफ हैपन अब अब ये भी समझिए आप कि रूल थर्टी सिक्स फोर रूल्स है जो जनरल इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ लॉ है जो जनरल प्रिंसिपल ऑफ लॉ है वो ये बोलता है कि रूल्स ड्रॉ पावर फ्रॉम सेक्शन तो एक्ट में अगर कुछ होगा उसके पावर से ही आप रूल बना सकते रूल थर्टी सिक्स फोर और रूल एटी सिक्स ए जो क्रेडिट को ब्लॉक कर देता है ये दोनों ही का पावर नहीं था सेक्शन कि भी किस पावर से आप मेरा क्रेडिट ब्लॉक कर रहे हो जो मेरा इलेक्ट्रॉनिक क्रेडिट लेचर में दिख रहा है किस पावर से आप बोल रहे हो कि इलेक्ट्रॉनिक क्रेडिट लेचर में दिख रहा है उससे ज्यादा हम आपको दस परसेंट भी देंगे बीस परसेंट भी देंगे ये कि किस पावर से बोल रहे हो ये चेंज भी उन्होंने ला, लाने का कोशिश किया है विच इज येट टू बी नोटिफाइड बट इट बी नोटिफाइड शून विच इज चेंजेस इन सेक्शन सिक्सटीन टू जो अभी हम देखे जो सेक्शन पी लेके आया है रिस्ट्रिक्टेड एंड सेक्शन थर्टी में ये ये चेंजेस लेके आ रहे हैं अब सेक्शन थर्टी में देखिए क्लियरली बोलता क्या है प्रपोज जो है नोटिफाई नहीं हुआ द डिटेल्स ऑफ आउटपुट सप्लाईज फर्निश्ड बाय द रजिस्टर्ड पर्सन अंडर सबसेक्शन वन ऑफ थर्टी सेवन मतलब जीएसटीआर वन में दिखा एंड एन ऑटो जनरेटेड स्टेटमेंट कंटेनिंग द डिटेल्स ऑफ इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट जो आज टू ए टू भी दिख रहा है शेल बी मेड अवेलेबल इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ सच फॉर्मैट सच फॉर्म एंड मैनर मतलब टू ए टू बी का फॉर्म चेंज करेगा Within such 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 time and and subject to such conditions and restricted as may be prescribed. Now, what we are envisaging, जो समझ में आ रहा है कि कैसा टू ए टू बी आगे आएगा उसमें आपके पास ये भी आएगा कि आपने राइट भरा है कि नहीं जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन वॉइसिज इशूड बाई न्यू रजिस्टर्ड टैक्स पेयर नॉर्मली आपको जिस दिन आपका ड्यू होता है कि आप टैक्सीबल हो गए उसके तीस दिन के अंदर आपको क्रेडिट रजिस्ट्रेशन लेना पड़ता तो रजिस्ट्रेशन अगर आप ले लेते हैं और आप इनवॉइस चेंज करते हैं तो आपको क्रेडिट मिल जाता है लेकिन अगर आपने वो सामने वाला ने आपका 30 दिन का वो क्वालिफाई नहीं किया वो हो सकता है पैंतीसवा दिन रजिस्ट्रेशन लिया हो और फिर वो आपको रिवाइज जीएसटी इनवॉइस दे रहा है तो डिपार्टमेंट को पकड़ में आ जाएगा और आपका क्रेडिट चला जाएगा आप एक एग्जाम्पल समझ लीजिए मैं एग्जाम्पल वापिस से बताता हूं फॉर एग्जाम्पल मैं लाइबल हो गया था फर्स्ट अप्रैल को रजिस्ट्रेशन लेने के लिए तो आई एम सपोज टू टेक रजिस्ट्रेशन बाई थर्टी अप्रैल इफ आई टेक रजिस्ट्रेशन बाई थर्टी अप्रैल मेरे को जितना सारा दिन का पुराना इन्वॉइस मैंने इशू किया है वो मैं चेंज कर सकता हूँ उसमें अपना जीएसटी नंबर डाल के जीएसटी चार्ज करके आपको दे सकता हूँ आपको उसका क्रेडिट मिलेगा अब मैंने वो तीस अप्रैल को कंप्लाई नहीं किया मैंने जाके दस मई को किया तो मेरे को एक से तीस का नहीं मिलेगा इस पर लॉ बट मैंने फिर भी कर दिया कि कौन पकड़ेगा कर देते बट डिपार्टमेंट आप पकड़ेगा और आपको अगर वो जीएसटी इनवॉइस भी दे रहा है तो आपको क्रेडिट नहीं मिलेगा वो आपका टू ए टू बी में रजिस्ट्रिक्ट कर दे सिमिलरली कोई कोई आपका सप्लायर अगर रिटर्न नहीं भर रहा है फॉर सच पीरियड ऑफ टाइम या जीएसटी आर वन में टैक्स दिखाया है ज्यादा और थ्री बी में दिया है कम भाई पैसे नहीं है अभी हमारे पास तो थ्री बी में इस मंथ में कम दे देते हैं नेक्स्ट मंथ में बैलेंस कर देंगे बट जीएसटी आर वन में पूरा इनवॉइस डिक्लेयर करके रखा है आपका क्रेडिट ब्लॉक हो जाएगा ऑल दीज चेंजेस आर कमिंग सो यही मैं बताना चाह रहा हूं कि आप अगर इस पूरा मोडस ऑपरेंडी को समझोगे और 2017 से अभी तक का चेंजेस ट्रैक करोगे तो पहले यह था कि सर आपके जो बुक्स में होगा वो हम आपको प्रोविजनली लेने दे देंगे सेक्शन 42, 43 का रिस्ट्रिक्शन रखा था कि भाई आप अपना आउटपुट भरोगे सामने वाला भरेगा मैचिंग होगा हम आपको दे देंगे बट फोर्टी टू आया नहीं तो ये लोग जीएसटी आर वन और टू ए टू बी से काम चलाए बोलने के लिए कि टू ए टू बी इंडिकेटिव है कि भाई कौन भरा है कौन नहीं भरा है 
कौन भरा है कौन नहीं भरा है देखने के लिए लेकिन आपका क्रेडिट कहीं नहीं जाए फिर वो लेके आए कि नहीं ये तो पूरे धड़ेले से क्रेडिट लिया जा रहा है तो इसको रिस्ट्रिक्ट किया जाए तो पहले वो रिस्ट्रिक्शन ट्वेंटी परसेंट फिर उसको कम करके टेन परसेंट फिर उसको कम करके फाइव परसेंट अभी वो लेके आ रहे हैं कि जितना आपका टू ए टू वी में दिखेगा उतना ही देंगे उससे ज्यादा आपको कुछ नहीं देंगे उसके बाद अभी लेके आ रहे हैं कि टू ए टू वी में जो दिख रहा है लेकिन उसमें भी अगर कुछ झोल है सामने वाला का किया हुआ तो उसको भी हम रिस्ट्रिक्ट कर सकते हैं जितना मैंने टैक्सेशन किया है अपनी लाइफ में अपने 16 साल के करियर में एक्साइज सर्विस टैक्स वैट और अब जीएसटी कभी भी टेनेट ऑफ टैक्सेशन ये नहीं होता है कि आप लॉ बना रहे हैं ओनली फॉर इवेडर्स एंड ऑफेंडर्स आप लॉ बनाते हैं आम आदमी के लिए यू मेक लॉ फॉर द जनरल पब्लिक यू डोंट मेक लॉ फॉर ऑफेंडर्स बट सम हाउ वी आर गेटिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ इंप्रेशन इंप्रेशन की दी लॉ इज बी मेड टू plug the loopholes for the offenders so that is something which will create a lot of litigation going forward jab amount bahut bade involved ho jayenge jab compliances bahut bade ho jayenge you imagine a normal business person jo shayad 20 50 crore ka dhanda karta hai wo kaise every month on month ye cheeze track karega pehle wo track kar raha tha ki humko jitna books mein lena hai fir 2a to b mein dikh raha hai ki nahi fir percentage ka calculation wo rakh ke rakha tha फिर वो ये देख रहा है वन परसेंट हमको कम से कम कैश में देना है अब उसको ट्रैक करना है कि टू ए टू बी में तो दिख रहा है लेकिन कहीं रिस्ट्रिक्शन तो नहीं है कहीं किसी वेंडर का मेरा रिट्रोस्पेक्टिव कैंसिलेशन तो नहीं हो गया है रजिस्ट्रेशन हाउ इज इट पॉसिबल फॉर समबडी टू ट्रैक सो मेनी कंप्लाइंसेस तो ये एक बड़ा प्रॉब्लम uh, uh, आने वाला है दैट इज समथिंग विच वी सी लेट मी टेक अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक चलिए सेक्शन 17 में आते हैं जो बोलता है कि फॉर सर्टेन रीजन योर क्रेडिट कैन बी ब्लॉक्ड उस क्रेडिट को ब्लॉक करने में वेट वी कैन डिस्कस वन मोर इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग let's let's look at this let's look at this uh 75 jo block credit ka hum baat kar rahe the let's look at this goods lost destroyed written off disposed of by way of gift of free samples now main uh ye kya hai section 75 ye bolta hai ki इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ दीज इवेंट्स कि अगर आपका कोई गुड्स लॉस्ट हो जाता है स्टोलन हो जाता है डिस्ट्रॉयड हो जाता है रिटर्न ऑफ इन बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट और डिस्पोज ऑफ बाई वे ऑफ गिफ्ट ऑफ फ्री सैम्पल्स तब उसका क्रेडिट हम आपको नहीं देंगे तो इसमें बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग एक सर्कुलर आया था सर्कुलर नंबर नाइनटी टू बाई इलेवन बाई टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन इसने दिया कि क्लैरिफिकेशन ऑन वेरियस डाउट रिलेटिंग टू ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ सेल्स प्रमोशन स्कीम्स अंडर जीएसटी इसमें देखिए उन्होंने क्या बोला दो एग्जाम्पल दिया फ्री सैंपल्स एंड गिफ्ट बाई वन गेट वन फ्री ऑफर फ्री सैंपल के लिए उन्होंने बोला कि भाई एक्ट में सेक्शन सेवनटीन फाइव एच में क्लियरली बोला हुआ है कि हम आपको गुड्स जो आप फ्री सैंपल पे देते हैं उसका हम आपको क्रेडिट नहीं देंगे ठीक है चलिए लॉ में लिखा हुआ है नहीं देंगे बाई वन गेट ऑन फ्री ऑफर में क्या है कि फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू बाई पेस्ट यू गेट अ टूथब्रश फ्री तो अगेन यू आर चार्जिंग फॉर दी टूथपेस्ट बट यू आर गिविंग द टूथब्रश फ्री बट इस केस में सर्कुलर बोला कि बॉस ऑल दो इट इज वर्ल्डेड एज बाई वन गेट वन फ्री आई विल रीड द लैंग्वेज ऑफ दी सर्कुलर 
it may appear at first glance that in case of offers like buy one get one free one item is being supplied free of cost without any consideration in fact it is not an individual supply of free goods but a case of two or more individual supplies where a single price is being charged for the entire supply it can at best be treated as supplying two goods for the price of one taxability will depend on whether it is a composite or a mixed supply but itc shall be available now aap ek cheez dekho let's take example of few industries <coughs> ek example apne lete hain medicine jab bhi koi pharmaceutical company apna medicine uh, launch karta hai he gives a lot of free medicines to the डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स टू डॉक्टर्स टू वेरियस मेडिकल स्टोर ताकि उसका मेडिसिन का प्रमोशन हो तो वो क्या है कि डॉक्टर को अपना नया डायबिटिक का कोई अगर मेडिसिन आया है तो वो ही देता है सारा दे अगर हम ये मेडिसिन दे रहे हैं तो इज दी कंपनी गोइंग इन टू लॉस लॉस में नहीं जाता है विच मीन्स दैट सम हाउ द प्राइस ऑफ द मेडिसिन आर डिटरमाइंड बाई द फैक्ट That the company has already budgeted कि हमको इतना फ्री सैंपल देना है डॉक्टर्स को लगभग पांच परसेंट दस परसेंट मटीरियल फ्री सैंपल में जाएगा एक्साइज के टाइम पे मैं आपको बताता हूँ कि एक्साइज के टाइम पे जब हम लोग ये कॉस्टिंग करते थे तो डिपार्टमेंट कैश फोर का कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड का फोर कैश फोर का सर्टिफिकेट मांगता था कि आप जब एसेबल वैल्यू निकाल रहे हैं प्रोडक्ट का प्राइस निकाल रहे हैं तो उसमें आप हमको बताइए क्या क्या आइटम गया है और अगर उस आइटम में आपने उस ओवरहेड का बजट किया है तो हम उसको क्रेडिट देंगे आप और काफी सारे जजमेंट्स भी है इसके ऊपर जहां पे कैश फोर का सर्टिफिकेट रिलाई करके ट्राइब्यूनल्स एंड हायर कोर्ट्स हैव अलाउड क्रेडिट ऑफ दोज आइटम्स हुज कॉस्ट इज बजटेड इन द प्राइस सेकंड आप जीएसटी में बात कर रहे हो कि हमको कास्केटिंग इफेक्ट ऑफ टैक्सेस हटाना है अगर आप उस मेडिसिन विच इज सप्लाइड एज फ्री सैंपल्स का हमको क्रेडिट रिवर्स करने बोल रहे हो तो वो कॉस्ट तो मेरा बाकी मेडिसिन पे जा रहा है विच मीन्स जीएसटी ऑफ फ्री सैंपल्स इज एक्चुअली बीइंग प्रोडेटेड ऑन दी कॉस्ट बिकॉज आई नो कि हमको क्रेडिट नहीं मिलेगा तो हम उसका कॉस्ट ऑलरेडी दूसरा में चढ़ाएगा हम लॉस तो करेगा नहीं बिजनेस में सिमिलरली जब आप ये मान रहे हो कि फ्री सैंपल्स का क्रेडिट हम आपको नहीं देंगे बट अगर हम एक के साथ एक फ्री देते हैं तो नोशन बिजनेस का है कि हम वो कोलगेट का मंजन का ही प्राइस ले रहे हैं ऊपर फ्री में दे रहे हैं लेकिन लैंग्वेज सर्कुलर सेज दैट इट इज अ केस ऑफ टू और मोर इंडिविजुअल सप्लाईज वेयर अ सिंगल प्राइस इज बाइ चार्ज फॉर द एंटायर सप्लाई हाउ कैन यू सी दिस इन टू फुटिंग बस एक चीज आप इतने क्लाइंट्स के साथ डील करते हो आप टी ले लीजिए आप एफ ले लीजिए हर जगह प्रोडक्ट टेस्टिंग आप टी एस्टेट्स ले लीजिए बिजनेस को प्रमोट करने के लिए चाहे आप परफ्यूम ले लीजिए अगर आप नहीं देंगे दूसरे को हाउ विल यू ग्रो योर बिजनेस एंड इफ बाय डूइंग प्रमोशनल एक्टिविटीज सेल्स प्रमोशन एक्टिविटीज इफ यू आर कमिंग आउट विद द इंटेंट कि हम आपको नहीं देंगे इसका क्रेडिट देन इज नॉट द होल ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ जीएसटी बिंग डिनाइड एक लॉजिकली आप सोच के देखिए मैंने एक एडवांस रूलिंग देखी Which was very interesting. If this is a pen, I give it at hundred percent discount. I will not get credit. But if this pen is of rupees ten, I give this pen at rupee one, and I pay GST on that. I will get credit. So the language which they are using, free samples. It is not free, but it is rupee one. Now pen ka ten rupee ka ek rupee cheat samajh me aayega. I apne distributor ko. एक पैंतीस हजार का टीवी ग्यारह सौ रुपये में दे दू तब मेरे को क्रेडिट मिल जाएगा सो बिकॉज आई चार्ज इलेवन हंड्रेड आई गेट क्रेडिट बिकॉज आई कैन गिविंग इट टू फॉर फ्री एज अ प्रमोशनल कि उसने एक सर्टेन टारगेट मीट किया है ये किया है मेरे को नहीं मिलेगा उसके बाद भी आप इंटरप्रिटेशन देखिए लैंग्वेज क्या लिखा हुआ आप ये लैंग्वेज देखिए गुड्स लॉस्ट स्टोल एंड डिस्ट्रॉइड देर इज एन एडवांस रूलिंग इट सेज दैट की डैमेज अगर हुआ है तो आपको क्रेडिट मिल जाएगा डिस्ट्रॉय हुआ है तो नहीं मिलेगा यू कैन इमेजिन कि अपने प्रोफेशनल्स हैं उनको इंटरप्रिटेशन में इतना दिमाग लगाना पड़ रहा है 
एक आम आदमी नॉर्मल पर्सन नॉर्मल एस एस सी हाउ विल ही काइंड ऑफ गो इन टू द डिफरेंशिएशन ऑफ डैमेज एंड डिस्ट्रॉइड आई मीन हाउ इज इट इवन पॉसिबल कि समवेयर विल गो समन विल गो इन टू द डेफिनेशन ऑफ डैमेज एंड डिस्ट्रॉइड सो हियर इज अ टिपिकल केस वेयर आई थिंक द intention of law to disallow credit on sales promotion items free samples acha i will give you another example there is an advance ruling which says ki jo aap promotional material baantte ho jaise aapne standee baanta aapne kahin pe flex baanta uska credit hum aapko de denge even if you are giving it to free to distributor wo hum aapko de denge jab tak wo destroy nahi hota agar wo destroy hoga to credit reverse karna hoga but agar aap standee laga rahe ho ki bhai xyz brand on a retail shop उसका हम क्रेडिट दे देंगे आप तो एक तो लॉ का वर्डिंग और दूसरा एडवांस रूलिंग के इतने विभिन्न और इतने सरप्राइजिंग इंटरप्रिटेशन जो है दैट हैज मेड द होल होल ऑब्जेक्ट गो फॉर अ टॉस एंड पूरा डिस्ट्रॉय कर दिया इसको पूरा डिस्ट्रॉय कर दिया मैं आपको एक और एग्जांपल लेता हूं यहां पर मैं पढ़ रहा था देखिए ट्रांसपोर्टेशन के लिए जस्ट रीड दिस लैंग्वेज मोटर व्हीकल थर्टीन सीटर तक नॉट मोर देन थर्टीन सीटर तक का क्रेडिट हमको नहीं मिलेगा अनलेस इट इज यूज फॉर फर्दर सप्लाई ऑफ मोटर व्हीकल्स वेसल्स एंड एयरक्राफ्ट का क्रेडिट मेरे को तभी मिलेगा वेन इट इज यूज फॉर फर्दर सप्लाई ऑफ सच वेसल्स और ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ पैसेंजर्स और इम्पार्टिंग ट्रेनिंग ऑफ नेविगेटिंग सच व्हीकल्स और इम्पार्टिंग ट्रेनिंग फॉर फ्लाइंग सच एयरक्राफ्ट और फॉर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ गुड्स मैं आपको दो दो एग्जाम्पल देता हूं सर इसमें आप इसको इसको बड़ा ध्यान से सुनिएगा सर मैं कैश ट्रांसपोर्टेशन का बिजनेस करता हूं मैं फॉर एग्जांपल स्ट्रांड रोड से दमदम तक कैश पहुंचाता हूं उसके लिए मैं वैन हायर करता हूं फॉर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ कैश फ्रॉम स्ट्रांड रोड टू दमदम सर देर इज एन एडवांस रूलिंग विच सेज दैट वी विल नॉट अलाउ यू एनी क्रेडिट ऑफ दिस मोटर व्हीकल irrespective of whether it is a passenger motor vehicle or goods motor vehicle because cash is not a goods are main to service de raha hu by transporting the cash from strand road bank to dambam branch i came across another uh, uh, advance ruling which is even more surprising there is a there is a complete van which may be more than 13 seater but it is used for प्रोवाइडिंग मोबाइल टेस्टिंग मतलब वो जगह जगह ले जाके मोबाइल टेस्टिंग करते हैं अब जैसे क्या हर जगह डायग्नोस्टिक सेंटर नहीं हो सकता तो वो गांव गांव जाके ब्लड टेस्ट वगैरह ये सब कर रहे हैं मोबाइल टेस्ट उसमें भी उन्होंने क्रेडिट डिनाई कर दिया एडवांस रूलिंग हैज डिनाइड क्रेडिट ऑन दैट ऑल्सो सो आई मीन कैन यू एवर बिलीव इज दिस नॉट माई ओनली इक्विपमेंट टू प्रोवाइड सर्विसेस मेरा बिजनेस का कॉन्सेप्ट ही है मोबाइल डायग्नोस्टिक सेंटर How can I do my business without a van? और मेरे को उसी का एडवांस रूलिंग बोलता क्रेडिट नहीं देगा जस्ट बिकॉज लैंग्वेज इका हुआ है कि ओनली इफ इट इज फॉर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ गुड्स और इट इज फॉर ट्रेनिंग ऑफ नेविगेटिंग सच व्हीकल्स और फॉर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ पैसेंजर आई एम डिस अलाउड टू क्रेडिट आई मीन कैन यू इमेजिन दी काइंड ऑफ एडवांस रूलिंग वी आर कमिंग अक्रॉस सो दिस इज द टिप ऑफ द आइस बर्ड nobody is understanding my business concept nobody is understanding what is in the course or furtherance of business and my credit is being denied so i am just bringing you to a situation where ye to abhi hua hai you just see ki where we are going to reach in coming years in terms of litigation is concerned now another point which i wanted to bring to your notice apne sab sab professionals say we are all professionals uh, i can see uh, dr saraf is professional pallavi is having uh, professional apne sab ek office se operate karte hain we all operate office now some of us in our own office uh, surender ji ke office hain samir bhai ki office hai now apne sab office mein there is a possibility of having an attached bathroom there is a possibility of having a wash basin there is a possibility of having a, a centralized air conditioner right now 
अगर आप कोई प्लम्बिंग का काम करा रहे हो आप कोई सेंट्रल एसी एयर कंडीशनिंग सिस्टम बैठाए हो इज इट नॉट इन रिलेशन टू योर प्रोफेशन इज इट नॉट इन द फर्दरेंस ऑफ योर प्रोफेशन कैन वी से इट इज नॉट देयर नाउ लेट्स गो टू अ क्लाइंट क्लाइंट ने अपने फैक्ट्री में स्टटरी लॉ के हिसाब से फायर हाइड्रेंट सिस्टम लगाया फायर हाइड्रेंट सिस्टम नाउ एक तो फायर हाइड्रेंट सिस्टम इज अ स्टटरी नॉम आपको फायर सेफ्टी बिना फायर लाइसेंस मिलेगा नहीं फैक्ट्री के लिए सेकेंड देखिए फायर हाइड्रेंट सिस्टम इन जनरल हेल्थ एंड वेलबींग ऑफ द पीपल वर्किंग देयर सेफ्टी के लिए रिक्वायर्ड है बट देर आर एडवांस रूलिंग्स विच हैव डिनाइड क्रेडिट ऑन फायर हाइड्रेंट सिस्टम ऑन प्लम्बिंग आइटम्स ऑन सेंट्रलाइज ए सी इन्होंने डिनाई किया है नो क्यों डिनाई किया है देखिए दो तीन चीज का इंटरप्रिटेशन वन इट इज नॉट डिरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू योर बिजनेस और इंटीग्रेटिव रिलेटेड टू योर बिजनेस ये एक ऑब्जेक्टिव है ऑब्वियसली दी पम्बिंग इज नॉट प्लम्बिंग पाइप और फायर हाइड्रेंट सिस्टम इज नॉट डिरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू माई बिजनेस ऑफ सप्लाइंग सी एस सर्विसेज और मैन्युफैक्चरिंग लेदर गुड्स बट इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इनडिरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू माई बिजनेस हाउ विल आई परफॉर्म माई बिजनेस विदाउट दीज सर्विसेज बट एडवांस रूलिंग हैव डिनाइड कि आपको हम नहीं देंगे बिकॉज वन इट इज नॉट डिरेक्टली और इंटीग्रेटिव रिलेटेड टू बिजनेस सेकेंड दो 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 नेगेटिव क्लॉज है वो है वर्क कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सर्विस इन रिलेशन टू इमोल प्रॉपर्टी क्रेडिट नहीं मिलता है कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑन योर ओन अकाउंट ऑफ इमोल प्रॉपर्टी कोई गुड्स आप खरीदते हो ऑन योर ओन अकाउंट फॉर कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ इमोल प्रॉपर्टी इसका क्रेडिट नहीं मिलता ये लॉ में दिया हुआ है अब लॉ में ये दिया हुआ है मेरा उसके ऊपर भी क्वेश्चन था कि भाई आप क्यों नहीं दोगे आप, आपको पता होगा कि सफारी ट्रीट्स का एक हाईकोर्ट का जजमेंट था जो अभी सुप्रीम कोर्ट में पेंडिंग है जहां पे वेयर हाउस का कंस्ट्रक्शन के ऊपर क्रेडिट उसने अलाउ किया था अब वो मैटर सुप्रीम कोर्ट में पेंडिंग है बट वहां पे इंटेंशन ऑफ लेजिस्लेचर राइट फ्रॉम सर्विस टैक्स रेजिम इट इज वेरी क्लियर की भाई सिविल कंस्ट्रक्शन का कोई भी क्रेडिट हम आपको नहीं देंगे फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग आउटपुट सर्विस बट टू इंटरप्रेट दैट कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ अ सेंट्रलाइज एयर कंडीशनर सिस्टम और a fire hydrant system is construction of an is construction of an immovable property is too far fetched immovable property ka concept bahut clear hai aap koi bhi cheez banate ho jisko aap without tode hue ukhad nahi sakte ho तब तक उसको इमोल प्रॉपर्टी नहीं बोलते तो माय क्वेश्चन टू एडवांस रूलिंग एंड टू जनरल प्रोफेशनल इज कि फायर हाइड्रेंट सिस्टम को प्लांट एंड मशीनरी क्यों नहीं बोल सकते व्हाई डू आई हैव टू ट्रीट इट एज इमोल प्रॉपर्टी के साथ कनेक्ट हो गया तो इट इज एन इमोल प्रॉपर्टी व्हाई कान माय फायर हाइड्रेंट सिस्टम बी ट्रीटेड एज प्लांट एंड मशीनरी इन द कोर्स और फर्दर ऑफ माई बिजनेस ऐसा ऐसा जजमेंट है जहां पर एक फैक्ट्री में लिफ्ट लगा है फॉर टेकिंग गुड्स फ्रॉम वन फ्लोर टू अनदर फ्लोर उस लिफ्ट का क्रेडिट भी डिनाई किया कंसीडरिंग इट टू बी एन इमोल प्रॉपर्टी वो सुप्रीम कोर्ट वाज वेरी क्लियर इन टेलिंग अस कि क्या इमोल प्रॉपर्टी है क्या नहीं है सुप्रीम कोर्ट सेड दैट कि एनीथिंग बिकम्स अ पार्ट ऑफ इमोल प्रॉपर्टी एंड देर फॉर इमोल प्रॉपर्टी इट सेल्फ इफ वाइल डिसमेंटलिंग इट यू कैनॉट डिसमेंटल इट इट विदाउट ब्रेकिंग द होल थिंग और ब्रेकिंग द पार्ट ऑफ द होल थिंग एस्केलेटर हो फायर हाइड्रेंट सिस्टम हो सेंट्रलाइज एयर कंडीशन सिस्टम हो यू कैन विदाउट ब्रेकिंग द सिविल स्ट्रक्चर यू कैन डिसमेंटल एंड टेक इट अवे एंड यू कैन रिप्लेस इट विद न्यू वन और रिपेयर एंड रिप्लेस इट बट नहीं दे रहे ये आप जजमेंट देखिए ग्लोबस स्टोर्स का केस में सेंट्रलाइज एयर कंडीशन प्लांट का क्रेडिट uh, नहीं दिया है सो so, छोटे छोटे जो बिजनेस एस्पेक्ट से रिलेटेड है ना मतलब आज आफ्टर दिस सेशन अपने प्रोफेशनल्स का दिमाग आसपास में चलना चाहिए कि बॉस मैं जिस टेबल पे काम कर रहा हूँ मैं जो चेयर अपने क्लाइंट्स के बैठने के लिए रखा हूँ इसका कहीं क्रेडिट तो देना ही नहीं कर देगा बिकॉज इस टेबल चेयर का मेरे सीए वाली पढ़ाई से कोई लेना देना नहीं है आई मीन कैन यू बिलीव दैट 
things will come to such a pass or things may come to such a pass ki aisa aisa litigation ho sakta hai but i am repeating myself ye advance rulings ka wajah se kya ho raha hai ki department ka education galat ho raha hai when department reads all these case laws to ye department ka education pura galat ja raha hai unko yahi samajh mein aa raha hai ki jo bhi business se directly connected nahi hai integrately connected nahi hai usko nikal do jo प्रॉपर्टी के साथ जुड़ गया है कहीं से भी अटैच हो गया है उसको इमोवल प्रॉपर्टी या वर्क्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट मान के उसका डिनाई कर दो क्रेडिट इज डिनाई कर दो सो आई एम एज अ प्रोफेशनल फ्रेटर्निटी आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग यू की लेट्स नॉट फॉलो दैट लेट एस फॉलो द बेयर एक्ट ऑफ द लॉ एंड सी कि वो क्रेडिट मिलेगा कि नहीं मिलेगा सो दैट इज समथिंग विच आई वॉन्टेड टू से अब देखिए ये तो हर कोई करता है अपने अपने पास भी आता है वी ऑल्सो गेट सो मेनी टाइम्स हम डायरी देते हैं कैलेंडर देते हैं क्लाइंट का हमारे पास आता है ऑल दीज आर व्हाट दीज आर बेसिकली प्रमोशन ऑफ योर कंपनी अगर फॉर एग्जांपल हम लोग चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट है और कोई डिजिटल सिग्नेचर सर्टिफिकेट बनाता है और वो अपना कैलेंडर बना के हमारे टेबल पर रखवाता है तो पर फोर्स आप देखो जब भी आपको डीएससी चाहिएगा या किसी क्लाइंट के लिए बनाना होगा तो आप सबसे पहले उसी डिजिटल सिग्नेचर वालों को फोन करेंगे बिकॉज वो आपके सबके सामने सो दिस इज डायरेक्टली इफेक्टिंग हिज बिजनेस बट समहाउ ये एडवांस रूलिंग कर्नाटका का बोला कि नहीं हम नहीं देंगे आपको डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ प्रमोशनल प्रोडक्ट्स के ऊपर हम आपको क्रेडिट नहीं देंगे अच्छा डिस्काउंट <coughs> खैर डिस्काउंट तो वह बहुत क्लियर है आई विल नॉट गो इन टू डिस्काउंट एनी मोर अच्छा एक एक कॉन्सेप्ट में और बात करना चाहता हूं कि आप काफी बार देखे होंगे कि जब हम गुड्स लॉस्ट बोलते हैं तो देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड अ नॉर्मल लॉस एंड देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एन अबनॉर्मल लॉस एक बार इसको समझते हैं जैसे अगर मैं एल्कोहल uh, या स्पिरिट मेकिंग बिजनेस में हूं तो कुछ स्पिरिट का उड़ जाना दो तीन पांच परसेंट स्पिरिट का उड़ जाना नॉर्मल लॉस है बिकॉज द नेचर ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट इज लाइक दिस होंगे या कोई अगर बाउंडरी फॉर्म में है तो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग करते वक्त कोई एक दो परसेंट गिर जाना ये नॉर्मल लॉस है अब नॉर्मल लॉस क्या है कि मैं जब यहां से माल भेज रहा हूं तो मेरा एक कंटेनर उलट गया मेरा एक कार्टन उलट गया मेरा प्रोडक्ट का लॉस हो गया वो अब नॉर्मल लॉस है तो हम लोगों को यह भी समझना है कि आज तक का एडवांस रूलिंग जितना आया है उसमें किसी एडवांस रूलिंग ने नॉर्मल लॉस का क्रेडिट अलाउ किया है और किसी एडवांस रूलिंग ने नॉर्मल लॉस प्लस अब नॉर्मल लॉस का क्रेडिट दोनों का ही अलाउ नहीं किया है फ्रेंड्स लॉ का इंटेंशन राइट फ्रॉम सेंट्रल एक्साइज रहा है कि अब नॉर्मल लॉस का क्रेडिट नहीं देंगे सेंट्रल एक्साइज में भी अब नॉर्मल लॉस जैसे अब नॉर्मल लॉस हो गया गुड्स स्टोर बाई फायर लेट्स तो उसका क्रेडिट नहीं देते थे उसका क्रेडिट का हमको रेमिशन करवाने जाना पड़ता था बट क्रेडिट नहीं देते थे तो लॉ का इंटेंशन बहुत क्लियर था अब नॉर्मल लॉस का नहीं मिलेगा नॉर्मल लॉस का मिलेगा तो मियरली गुड्स लॉस्ट लिखा हुआ है तो अपने को आई एम टेलिंग यू दिस बिकॉज वी हैव टू गो बियॉन्ड वॉट इज यू नो एडवांस रूलिंग सेइंग वी हैव टू यूज आर ओन ब्रेन वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दिजनेस वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दी कॉन्सेप्ट की क्या कॉन्सेप्ट चल रहा है क्या आ रहा है उसके बाद हम ये बुद्धि लगाए कि आई मिलेगा कि नहीं मिलेगा सो गुड्स लॉस्ट में दिस इज वन ऑफ द थिंग दैट आई वॉन्टेड टू टेल यू सफारी डिटेल्स आई थिंक सब जानते हैं नॉट गोइंग टू डिटेल ऑन दिस वन रूल एटी सिक्स ए में भी ब्लॉकिंग आज हो ही रहा है क्रेडिट का आई थिंक इट्स ऑलरेडी फाइव टेन हाउ मच मोर टाइम डू आई हैव फाइव मिनट्स ओके so i i will uh, close my argument or i mean discussion uh, then maybe you can uh, uh, i i can take maybe some questions uh, i will have to leave by 5:30 so i'm giving enough time for question answers also if anybody has any uh, anyone ek, has ek any thought, yes no ek ek palavi ek ek thought last deke jata hu uh, odisha सॉरी ओशन फ्रेड के ऊपर अभी सुप्रीम कोर्ट का जजमेंट आया था 
करेक्ट उस जजमेंट पे सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बोला कि ओशन फ्रेट के ऊपर रिवर्स चार्ज में जीएसटी नहीं देना है इफ इट इज सी आई एफ सेल क्योंकि वैल्यू में ही इंश्योरेंस और फ्रेट जुड़ा हुआ है करेक्ट नाउ एक चीज अज्यूम करते हैं कि 2017 से 22 में दो तरीके के प्रोफेशनल्स रहे होंगे एक प्रोफेशनल बोला कि यार आप टैक्स दे दो और क्रेडिट ले लो न्यूट्रल सिचुएशन है लिटिगेशन में क्यों जाना अपने लिटिगेशन में नहीं जाते हैं आप दे दो ना टैक्स और क्रेडिट ले लो तो अपने लिए न्यूट्रल रहा तो किसी किसी चार्ट अकाउंटेंट्स ने वो क्रेडिट दिला दिया और बात खत्म कर दी टैक्स न्यूट्रल इम्पैक्ट हो गया कोई कोई प्रोफेशनल ऐसे थे बोले कि नहीं ये नहीं देना है अपने को नहीं देना बनता है अपने नहीं देंगे और वो लिटिगेशन में गए या नहीं दिए ना उन सेट ऑफ एस एस जिसने क्रेडिट ले लिया टैक्स दिया क्रेडिट लिया आज लॉ स्टैंड करता है कि उसके ऊपर टैक्स बनता ही नहीं था तो मेरा सबके लिए फूड फॉर थॉट दो है कि इन दिस सिचुएशन नंबर वन जहां पे हमने टैक्स दिलाया था और क्रेडिट ले लिया था आफ्टर सुप्रीम कोर्ट का जजमेंट फर्स्ट जो आपने टैक्स दिलाया था वो टैक्स था क्या क्योंकि अब तो सुप्रीम कोर्ट बोल रहा है कि उसके ऊपर टैक्स बनता नहीं दैट इज फाइनल डिसीजन और अगर वो टैक्स नहीं था तो आपने जो क्रेडिट लिया वो अलाउ होगा क्या बिकॉज क्रेडिट तो सिर्फ टैक्स का मिलता है इनपुट टैक्स का तो अगर वो टैक्स ही नहीं था तो उसका क्रेडिट मिलेगा क्या अब आपको और अगर क्रेडिट नहीं मिलेगा तो इस केस में हम लोगों को क्या करना चाहिए जो हम क्रेडिट लेके बैठे हैं चुपचाप बैठे रहें या उसका रिफंड क्लेम फाइल करें ये एक फूड फॉर थॉट मैं आप सबको देना चाहता हूँ एंड पलवी आई थिंक आई बी ओपन फॉर क्वेश्चन भैया एक क्वेश्चन आया है सर्कुलर जीरो टू टू थाउजेंड एटीन का रेलिवेंस क्या है आई टी सी अवेलेबल में तो थोड़ा जिसने भी पूछा है उसको बोलो थोड़ा सा सर्कुलर टू थाउजेंड बाई एटीन का सर्कुलर का थोड़ा उल्लेखन करेगा अमन जी कैन यू प्लीज एक्सप्लेन थोड़ा सा नाइनटीन का सर्कुलर था नहीं लगता मोहित मिंडल लिमिटेड वर्सेस यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया इज ओनली एप्लीकेबल ऑन सी एफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट है राइट सर हेलो एक क्वेश्चन आया हुआ है आरवी हरीश चोपाड़ा जी ने पूछा है आर वी एलिजिबल फॉर इनपुट क्रेडिट ऑन नॉन ओरिजिनल वर्क लाइक रिपेयर रिप्लेसमेंट ऑफ टाइल्स वॉशरूम एयर कंडीशनिंग ये आई थिंक यू हैव ऑलरेडी क्लियर नहीं नहीं देखिए इसमें इसमें मैं एक चीज बताना चाहता हूँ कि आप वेट लेट मी शो द एक्ट देखिए इन्होंने जो पूछा है उसका आंसर सी डी और उसका एक्सप्लेनेशन में है वर्क्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सर्विस व्हेन सप्लाइड फॉर कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ इमोल प्रॉपर्टी शेल नॉट बी अलाउड एक्सेप्ट व्हेन इट इज एन इनपुट सर्विस फॉर फर्दर सप्लाई ऑफ वर्क्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट गुड्स और सर्विसेज और बोथ रिसीव बाय अ टैक्सीबल पर्सन फॉर कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ इमोल प्रॉपर्टी ऑन इज ओन अकाउंट इंक्लूडिंग वेन सच गुड्स और सर्विसेज आर बोथ यूज इन दी कोर्स ऑफ फर्दर ऑफ बिजनेस इसका भी क्रेडिट हमको नहीं मिले कंस्ट्रक्शन को डिफाइन किया कंस्ट्रक्शन इंक्लूड्स रिकंस्ट्रक्शन रिनोवेशन एडिशन ऑल्टरेशन और रिपेयर टू दी एक्सटेंट ऑफ कैपिटलाइजेशन अब जो हरीश जी पूछ रहे हैं वो रिपेयर का ही केस है रिपेयर एंड रिप्लेसमेंट कंस्ट्रक्शन में 
रिकंस्ट्रक्शन इनोवेशन रिपेयर इंक्लूड होता है टू दी एक्सटेंट ऑफ कैपिटलाइजेशन बट अगर आप इसको कैपिटलाइज नहीं करोगे तो वो फिर कंस्ट्रक्शन के एक्सप्रेशन से बाहर हो जाता है एंड देन लिटरली लिटरली स्पीकिंग देर इज नो रिस्ट्रिक्शन टू टेक क्रेडिट बट अगर लॉ का इंटेंट है कि आपको कोई भी कंस्ट्रक्शन रिलेटेड वर्क रिपेयर रिलेटेड वर्क पर नहीं देंगे देन बाई मियर कैपिटलाइजेशन और नॉन कैपिटलाइजेशन शुड नॉट डिसाइड द क्रेडिट सो अगर आप रियली मेयर से पूछेंगे कि अगर लेजिस्लेशन का इंटेंट है नहीं देने का ऑन रिनोवेशन देन चाहे कैपिटलाइज करें चाहे नहीं करें नहीं देंगे लेकिन अगर हम लिटरल इंटरप्रिटेशन से जाएंगे नाउ प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ इंटरप्रिटेशन यही बोलता है कि हम लिटरल इंटरप्रिटेशन से जाए एंड वी टेक एन इंटरप्रिटेशन विच इज मोर बेनिफिशियल टू एस एस देन इन दैट केस आई विल टेक द क्रेडिट ऑफ दिस इफ आई डो नॉट कैपिटलाइज इन दुक्स अकाउंट तो अगर अपनी इंटेंट क्या हो सकता है बिकॉज अगर कैपिटलाइजेशन दिया गया है तो आई थिंक दिस गिवन टू अवॉइड डिस्प्यूट तो आई थिंक करेक्ट यू 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 करेक्ट विच इज आई ऑल्सो बिलीव और हमने भी यही किया है की हमने सबका क्रेडिट दिलाया है जहां पे कैपिटलाइज नहीं हुआ है बट आई एम ट्राइंग टू पॉइंट आउट कि बॉस लॉ में आप कंस्ट्रक्शन देखो कि कंस्ट्रक्शन में अनुमली है कि आप जो इस कान से ऐसे नहीं पकड़ सकते उसको वैसे भी नहीं पकड़ सकते हो तो अगर आप मैं बिकॉज नियरली कैपिटलाइज नहीं करूं तो आप मेरे को क्रेडिट दे दोगे और कैपिटलाइज कर दू तो आप क्रेडिट नहीं दोगे बट कैपिटलाइजेशन का कोई नियम नहीं है मैं पचास लाख का आइटम भी अपना रेवेन्यू में राइट ऑफ कर सकता हूँ एक कंटेंशियस इशू क्या हो सकता है जो लिटिगेट भी किया जा सकता है इन ड्यू कोर्स डिपार्टमेंट की तरफ से वो ये है कि अब मैंने कैपिटलाइज नहीं किया आई हैव डन सम सम रिपेयर मेजर रिपेयर वर्क्स इन माय ऑफिस बट मेरे हिसाब से वो रिपेयर एंड मेंटेनेंस है मैंने उसको एक्सपेंस में डाल दिया अब डिपार्टमेंट ने अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड को रेफर करके उसमें उसका लाइफ इंक्रीज हो गया एंड इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द फिक्स उसको उस एंगल से अगर डिपार्टमेंट जाने लगी आई थिंक हमें उसका भी टेस्ट देखना पड़ेगा और टैक्स और हर तरह के कोई इशूज आते हैं तो सर हर्षिश में क्या है uh, कौन बोला सॉरी हर्ष बोले डॉक्टर आयुष बोल रहे थे मैं बोल रहा हूँ मैं बोल रहा हूँ हाँ आयुष इसमें मेरा कहना यह है कि एकदम डिपार्टमेंट वो एंगल देख सकता है कि अकाउंटिंग स्टैंड के हिसाब से आपको कैपिटलाइज नहीं करना चाहिए था या करना चाहिए था बट अगर आप प्योर जीएसटी लॉ में देखोगे ना दे हैव नॉट रेफर्ड दी वर्ड की वी विल रेफर इट टू अकाउंटिंग स्टैंड नाउ ये टैक्स टैक्स प्रिंसिपल में ये क्लियर है कि हम एक एक्ट को दूसरा एक जगह इंप्लाई नहीं करेंगे जब तक कि एक्ट में ही मेंशन नहीं हूँ तो मैं अगर प्योरली जाऊंगा तो मैं उसको फाइट कर सकता हूँ कि भी कहीं पे भी जीएसटी में रेफरेंस अकाउंटिंग सेंट का नहीं लिया हुआ है और ये मेरा अकाउंटिंग प्रिंसिपल है कि मैं हो सकता है दस हजार का आइटम कैपिटलाइज करूँ पचास हजार का आइटम कैपिटलाइज करूँ या पचास लाख का नहीं करूँ तो दैट इज देर बट वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू पॉइंट आउट की दिस इज अ क्लियर एनोमली कि ये कैपिटलाइजेशन कर रहे हो तो आपको नहीं मिलेगा और आप कैपिटलाइज नहीं कर रहे हो तो आप मिलेगा दिस इज वॉट आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू पॉइंट आउट हाँ सो एलिजिबिलिटी ऑफ आई टी सी ऑन रिपेयर ऑफ व्हीकल देखो अगर व्हीकल ओरिजिनली वॉज नॉट एलिजिबल फॉर क्रेडिट तो उसका रिपेयर भी एलिजिबल नहीं होगा क्रेडिट फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर टेन सीटर कार है फॉर पैसेंजर व्हीकल उसका क्रेडिट नहीं मिलता है ना उसका रेंटल का मिलता है ना उसका रिपेयर का मिलेगा सो आई आई डोंट थिंक कि रिपेयर रिपेयर व्हीकल का मिलेगा दीपक जी हेलो सॉरी बैक में कोई बोल रहा दीपक जी सिक्सटीन फोर में आप क्या लिटिगेट करना चाहते हैं मतलब What do you want to litigate? Ki timeline ek to fix kar diya hai, jo hither to September दीपक जी जितना मेरा अंडरस्टैंडिंग है एंड डॉक्टर सराफ में सेकेंड मी ऑन दिस की लॉ के पास ये पावर है कि सब्जेक्ट टू सच कंडीशन सच रिस्ट्रिक्शन आपको आईटीसी दे तो ये टाइमलाइन इंपोज करने का स्टेटरी पावर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन से डिराइव होता है लॉ के पास सो आई कैनॉट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली चैलेंज दिस पावर 
अब वो टाइम लाइन फेयर है कि नहीं है एक अनदर मैटर है बट लॉ के पास पावर है टू लेजिस्लेट ऑन दाइन लाइन हाँ डॉक्टर सराफ प्लीज सप्लीमेंट नहीं ऑफिस और अभी जो लॉ है प्रेजेंट लॉ इज वेरी क्लियर इट इज क्लियर दैट सिक्सटीन फोर इज देर एंड टाइम लाइन ऑफ अप टू सेप्टेम्बर रिटर्न इज देर बट एज रिगार्ड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल वैलिडिटी सर इट इज ऑलरेडी पेंडिंग इन कोर्ट एंड माई हम्बल व्यू इज दैट इट्स कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल वैलिडिटी कैन बी वेरी वैलिडली चैलेंज बिकॉज सर देर आर टू रीजन सेक्शन सिक्सटीन टू स्टार्ट विद ए नॉन ऑफ टेंट क्लोज क्लोज secondly if all the four conditions of 162 are satisfied by me itc becomes my vesting right my vested right so once it becomes my vested right my plea before the honorable lordships will be that once it becomes my vested right so by imposing a timeline on me just because of procedural defaults how can you take away a vested right from me so now this is again a controversial issue as on that as on date the law of the land is that the timeline is there but maybe the courts might take a favorable view in these grounds maybe isme main ek isme main ek add karta hu khali ki dekhe excise mein koi timeline nahi tha service tax mein koi timeline nahi tha ये ये जो डॉक्टर आयुष सराफ जो बोल रहे हैं उसी पॉइंट के ऊपर रिफंड्स के ऊपर रिफंड्स का टाइम लाइन एक्साइज में भी था सर्विस टैक्स में भी था और अभी जीएसटी में भी है रिफंड को लेके काफी सारे लिटिगेशन हुए थे कि भाई एक बार जब रिफंड मेरा क्रिस्टलाइज हो गया कि ये रिफंड मेरे को बनता है देन वाई देर इज अ लिमिटेशन टू फाइल एंड क्लेम दैट रिफंड उस मैटर में कोर्ट्स ने अलग अलग आर्ग्यूमेंट लिए हैं कि एक तो द लेजिस्लेचर हैज अ राइट टू इम्पोज टाइमलाइन फॉर क्लेमिंग रिफंड आपको एक बेनिफिट मिल रहा है डज नॉट मीन दैट यू कैन एंजॉय द बेनिफिट एट योर ओन लेजर थ्रू आउट द लाइफ यू ऑल्सो हैव अ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू क्लेम एंड गेट दैट बेनिफिट सेकेंड लेजिस्लेचर एक अकाउंट आपका लाइफ लॉन्ग नहीं रख सकता है कि आपका रिफंड अगर आज निकलता है तो आप उसको दस साल तक रखो नाउ द होल आइडिया वॉज की ऑपरेशनल सेफ गार्ड ऑपरेशनल कंडीशन लगा सकता है राइट है रिफंड का केस भी लगाया गया था बट रिफंड इज डिफरेंट रिफंड इज अ बेनिफिट ऑफ कोर्स बट दिस आई टी सी इज इज अज अ वेस्टेड बेनिफिट राइट सो देर इज ऑब्वियसली अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन आई टी सी एंड रिफंड लाइक डॉक्टर सराफ सेट की इट इज ऑलरेडी पेंडिंग लेट एस सी इफ इट कम्स इन फेवर ऑफ एस एस सीज इट इज ग्रेट बट to me it looks a little unlikely let's see further aap and company that. case uh, gave us some interest ah, but airtel cases correct, again correct, blocked correct, that road correct, for us correct 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 sir correct correct, correct. sir i have one doubt sir can i yes yes please mm -hmm. one of the client he have like service industry like in imports and export he is mm -hmm. like a centralized like bookkeeping or everything you know taking input tax credit like uh, He have a sales offices at like uh, across the country. C can he can mm -hmm. he do that? Uh, because I thought you no know, one of the Karnataka uh, like uh, department they said you need to get a GST registration. He he ran so like that, but we don't have like uh, any warehouses there or just we have a sales offices like a small office and uh, one uh, sales person will be there. He do sales and yes, uh, me. Ah, yes, me, Mr. Malila. लॉ इज वेरी क्लियर इन दिस रिगार्ड ये ये जो स्टेम होता है ना कि भाई हमको अलग अलग जगह रजिस्ट्रेशन लेना है होल ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ ग्रांटिंग रजिस्ट्रेशन एंड पेइंग टैक्स इन डिफरेंट स्टेट वॉज दैट की वेर एवर गुड्स आर कंज्यूम दैक्स शू गो इन टू दैट स्टेट that was the fulcrum point of you know asking people to take registration in the state where actually goods are supplied or services are being rendered now in your case let's say you have a head office in calcutta and you have sales offices in bihar odisha northeast now under gst there is no concept of centralized registration you have to take registration in a state where you supply goods or you offer services now coming to the state level if you have a permanent establishment there 
and if you are supplying any goods or services you have to take registration in your case you have a sales office you have a sales person deployed and you are selling goods there you may not have warehouse goods might move directly from your uh, calcutta office to bihar customer to uh, northeast customer goods may not be warehoused but still a sales person is there you have a permanent establishment so you are actually supplying the goods from there so you have to take a registration there that is my understand Uh, but okay sir as of now until uh, anyhow we are everything you know uh, making like igst invoices until now nothing is wrong no sir only we need to get take registration because of depend upon the law it said that uh, because of one threshold exceed from the different state also any see there is see there 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 could be i am not saying that uh, there could be a, a, a issue because you have paid igst Yes. and igst ka distribution mechanism between central and state is different and when you pay cgst and sgst that that is different because sgst goes purely to uh, the uh, state government and cgst goes to the central government now assume ki your goods have been gone to odisha and goods are consumed there in odisha so if i take uh, credit wise you pay igst here your branch takes credit and pays cgst sgst local but in the end in the account book of central and state how much state is getting taxes and how much central is getting might differ between pure igst and cgst sgst so there a problem might come however under gst law they will not go into account the you have paid igst so you will not charge be charged for cgst sgst they will they might still rake up a litigation and tell you you claim refund of igst but you pay cgst igst so my i have heard your case facts very briefly we can go into detail of your case and then advise you but don't take that chance that at least i have paid tax no that is not the right approach you can still end up in a huge litigation so please please don't take up that that chance at all okay okay sir Uh, Pallavi, you are uh, muted. I think so. Pravin ji has a question. Is yes. uh, Pravin ji has a question. Pravin ji, you can hello. ask. Hello. Ah, uh, ji, namaskar ji. I am from Canada. I am talking to you. Namaskar, namaskar. Hello. हाँ, 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 तो अगले महीने भरते या दूसरे तीसरे महीने में भरते तो ये प्रोसेस चलेगा क्या सर अच्छा रहेगा क्या कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं आएगा क्या आगे इसमें इंटरेस्ट का इशू आएगा आपका फॉर एग्जाम्पल देखिये जीएसटी टू बी में सौ रुपया दिख रहा था आपका बुक्स में एक सौ दस रुपया है आपने ले लिया दस रुपया अब उसको बोला कि यार तुम जाके मार्च में भरो वो मार्च में भरा तो आपका क्रेडिट ठीक हो गया लेकिन ये दस रुपया आपका बनता था मार्च में जो आप जनवरी में ले लिए तो दो महीने का इंटरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट ले सकता है आपसे एक ये प्रॉब्लम है दूसरा ईयर हाँ उसमें एक और है ईयर 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 चेंज होने का भी प्रॉब्लम फॉर एग्जाम्पल मार्च का क्रेडिट था अलवी थोड़ा म्यूट करो ना प्लीज मार्च का क्रेडिट था और उसने जाके नेक्स्ट दिसंबर जनवरी में वो टैक्स भरा तो वो एक ईयर चेंज का भी इशू आ सकता है बेसिकली यही इशू आ सकता है ये दो ही इशू आ सकता है इसमें शरद जी का क्वेश्चन है शरद अग्रवाल जी का शरद जी आप अनम्यूट कर सकते हैं हेलो हेलो सर मैं स्वाति हूँ मैं अपने भैया के अकाउंट से ये वेबिनार अटेंड कर रही थी सर uh, uh, मेरा एक क्वेश्चन था तो इफ आई एम सोली इनटू एक्सपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट के केस में क्या होता है कि वो आईटीसी ऑन कैपिटल गुड्स अलाउ नहीं करते हैं एज ए रिफंड तो माय पॉइंट इज इफ आई एम सोली इन टू और हम, हमने आई लिया है तो फिर इज इट जस्टिफाइड मतलब क्या हम लोग इसके अगेंस्ट फाइट कर सकते हैं क्योंकि वो इनपुट अगर हम लोग इनपुट ले रहे हैं और उसको रख रहे हैं तो मतलब क्या यूज आ रहा है वो फिर देखिए ये एक्चुअली में क्या ना कि कैपिटल गुड्स का आईटीसी लॉ में अलाउ नहीं किया है प्राइमरी हाँ. रीजन क्या है मैं बता सकता हूँ बिकॉज आज आप एक्सपोर्ट कर रहे हो कल डोमेस्टिक सेल भी कर सकते हो 
तो उस समय लॉ के पास कोई मैकेनिज्म नहीं है चेक करने का कि अरे आपने तो पूरा क्रेडिट ले लिया रिफंड दे दिया अब आप डोमेस्टिक कर रहे हो डोमेस्टिक में अगर एग्जाम हुआ तो आपको प्रोविट क्रेडिट डिस करना पड़ेगा तो उन्होंने कैपिटल गुड्स का कभी दिया ही नहीं कि कैपिटल गुड्स का रिफंड हम नहीं देंगे इफ यू आर प्योरली इनटू जीरो रेटेड सेल अच्छा ओके सर आई है So, will that provision of 180 days payment uh, of 180 days otherwise credit reverse करना पड़ेगा? Will it apply to this retention money? ये purely मैं अपना interpretation बता रहा हूँ हाँ. हाँ. मैंने जो language पढ़ा था उसमें था कि 180 days का application तभी होता है when the SSC fails to pay. Correct. In the case of retention money, this is a business agreement. I have not failed to pay. Hmm. तो so, If I have not failed to pay, then that clause itself does not arise. It is a business arrangement between two people. So purely my opinion is that retention ka case mein wo 180 days wala applicable nahi hoga. Okay. Okay. Thank you that so is, much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. I think Pallavi, it's already 5:30. Venu Gopal ji is already here. Ajay, For I his respect, request, I think. I would request uh, Navin uh, Singhal ji to say word of thanks. Are you are you staying till the end or? Uh, Will you take leave now? I will take leave now. Okay, you will take leave. Okay. Yeah. I I would just thank you on behalf of everybody. I think we had a fabulous chairman in Dr. Ayush Saraf. It was a pleasure interacting with him. Uh, fabulous host uh, Pallavi and others for taking question answers and fabulous host. I hope the session was useful. So uh, yeah, please, Navin, go on. Yeah. Uh, good evening to. One and all uh, present here. It is uh, such an honor to thank uh, Roy Maya. One seventy plus participants have been enriched today. Thank you, Roy Maya, for the wonderful insights on section forty one to seventeen five and uh, various case laws and advance rulings and answering all the questions so nicely and so patiently. We are looking for uh, many more sessions with you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. i'll i'll take your leave thank you so much oh. uh all the best venu sir uh i apologize for not being there in your session i will miss it but i will look after the recording i have a meeting i'm so sorry i apologize me thank you very much sir i understand thank you thank you thanks we welcome venu gopal sir uh hello sir Hello, hello, madam. Uh, I would like to introduce Mr. Venu Gopal ji. Uh, he is uh, basically uh, the founder partner in Venu Vinay uh, since two thousand two, and he is a uh, secured. He has secured forty five rank in ICI uh, final, and he is also a certified information system auditor. He has done other courses also with uh, our institute. like this a business valuation internal audit fraud detections forensic accounting etc and also a done a one year course with iim on data analysis and business intelligence he is also specialized mainly as a active speaker in uh, gst on technology and other implementation of technologies challenges etc he has also written a book on gst technical guide on gst audit released by the institute and other publications materials he is also played an active role in drafting and designing e invoicing along with the gst and and nic <clears throat> he has also uh, developed some excel based utilities for gst uh, related validations json file and gst impact reader gst audit working papers etc he has other than the audit he has also his hands on coding like vb net and r python he is also behind the uh, development and management of cloud application of taxmile and insta financial so uh, i welcome 
once again mr venugopal ji uh, for his uh, speech on the technology on gst thank you ma'am uh, you have to enable the screen sharing for me uh, just a second yes it has been done all right um so first and foremost uh, let me start saying that uh, uh, this session will not have will not have any case laws or will not have any controversial statements about whether itc milega nahi milega kya classification hai ye judgment high court ka judgment supreme court mein khadega what will happen no issues no section numbers no rule numbers now some of you be worried ki a knowledge session hai and uh, now we don't have anything but definitely don't worry there are lot of uh, food for thought because uh, i'm sure after uh, gst and income tax online filing today if one talks about xml or json we understand that no? we understand that language uh, is ha json pe aisa hota hai ye hota hai so Our XML files are this. Uh, today, uh, we the department is making us uh, forcibly understanding technology. And uh, though finance professionals, uh, for us technology means, and quote and quote technology means Microsoft Excel pivot table SMIF, or uh, those are the those are the things is what we actually say technology. It's a jada is there are systems right that will take care. but however unfortunately today we also have to get into the technology world and uh, i would be more focusing on uh, what is happening at the department site what department is doing and what are the changes that are happening which are making the departmental audits more effective or evables evasions or finding the fraud circular trading which are happening very effectively how is that happening is what we are going to discuss and understand today that's the agenda feel free to put any question in the chat or anything interrupt me and uh, uh, trust me this will not have any litigative uh, answers any of any subject question which is there uh, we have the host dr sharaf ji is there so who can actually take care of all the questions that are coming on the gst all right now there are sessions that are happening we hear this rpa artificial intelligence machine learning uh, in fact from ica we have a course on blockchain you know we have these bots all these uh, if you say they are buzz buzzwords i will say your answer is wrong they are no longer a buzzword they are real they exist they are real and they exist let me give you a simple example which that you are seeing maybe some of you are using uh, some gst return filing software so gst data analysis software मतलब अपने यूजर नेम पासवर्ड एंटर किया एक बटन दबा दिया सिस्टम विल ऑटोमेटिकली डाउनलोड योर जीएसटी और टू ए एंड एवरीथिंग राइट इफ यू हैव टू डू मैन्युअली यू गो मंथ बाय मंथ यू क्लिक ए बटन इट विल से वेट फॉर 15 मिनट्स इट विल प्रोसेस यू विल डाउनलोड यू विल गेट एक्सेल फाइल यू हैव टू कॉपी दैट एक्सेल पुट इट ऑल दोस थिंग्स टुडे आई डोंट थिंक एनीवन इज डूइंग दैट प्रोसेस एनीमोर is like unless otherwise they are really bored in life and wants to do some something extra they are doing this otherwise uh, today we have tools which are doing automatically and when we say these tools are doing automatically they are like an rpa because they know i every month this is the place that data exists i just need to go to this place and i will have to uh, do this right so this is how uh, the this buzzwords which you are saying they are actually working okay now i want you all to look at how department is adopting and what they are doing 
those are the things that we are going to look at it okay now from the custom side on the customs department those i will not focus much on it i'll be focusing much on gst but today their uh, bill of entry processing are much much improved though we call them as edps the earlier olden technology which is there you know the concept of the machine learning and deep learning is the way work uh, uh, they do a something called feature extraction you know in a normal way you go and you watch your item you can touch feel you can say what it is you can expect what will be the weight of it what all those things which you can which you can assess and expect i just take a photo it will happen today you have a product in front of you you don't know what it is Let, let's say i have a product in front of me let's say i have this you don't know what it is you open the google you open the google just take a photo of it there is some content here it will exactly search it online go to amazon and where it is and it will say this is the product or looking at it it will say the highlighter or looking at various things it will automatically say this is a mouse right so the feature extraction capabilities are very high in today's image processing systems and the same thing is being adopted by the customs in their uh, express scanning we call this as a neural networks where it will create a data both supervised learning and unsupervised learning sometimes you just ignore uh, some words which come from my mouth but these are things happening automatically and how is it facilitating if i have too much of data that is coming in like the boxes the data which you are seeing inside the data which you are seeing inside this is too much of containers that are coming in which has all the data so this data is filtered through various neural network system and these systems are automatically uh, automatically taken care and this is saying that okay uh, as it is uh, processing each of the bill of entry basis various attributes it is classifying okay pick these containers okay i want to assess the value of it you want to do a physical examination you don't want to do a clearing just stop them or you give these alerts to the officer not just the stopping but you what what should officer do along with it it is going to stop and say and rest you automatically pass and if you can see it on my right side it is saying that each activity what do you want to do with that each activity so that way a customs officer can actually process things much faster and more efficiently now any today if you go to audit we are not going to do a 100% verification then it is like it's beyond internal audits we are only doing a sample but what if the computer does that 100% verification after that verification it is picking a sample which is more likely to happen to have an issues and giving it to you for a decision right the chances of it being error is very likely today if an officer is standing there and stopping a vehicle for an eva bill default trust me 90% of the chances that the officer is not picking it randomly he has an information to stop that vehicle in the coming slides i'll tell you how that information is getting passed on so this is happening the next thing the next technology which they use which they are uh, which they are putting it is why don't we implement a blockchain today now e invoice going to, pardon me uh, today e invoice is only there at a b2b and the e invoice is going to become for b2c that is what is being contemplated i'm not sure how many of you are aware irp was only one nic portal six more irps are coming in because they want to all add the load currently it is 20 crores the like 500 tha it was become slowly slowly reduced who knows the next year itself five crores and b2c was never envisaged who knows they would say that okay b2c will be done 
today the data is digitally available all the places the moment you scan that the qr code on the e invoice you will get the details of the bill automatically the high level invoice who is the supplier who is the recipient what is the value what is the hsn of the highest item the the key parameters that are coming automatically on scanning of the code which means this data is digitally availed and dumped outside uh, for the further usage so that it's kind of available openly for usage if i bring in this blockchain technology i it is kind of uh, uh, like if i have to put in a layman language what this blockchain technology though not exactly the same while you are taking a credit in 3b you are expecting the visible value to be there in gst or 2a right it is kind of an authentication saying that if the line item is there in 2a it is your genuine purchase so likewise in this in a blockchain technology it will validate the information that you are saying that is it right or wrong it is we call it as distributed ledger so certain things you ignore the terminology whichever i use ignore it but this is what now they are trying to adopt saying that okay fine now any port anywhere it can go and i will be able to handle it how they are moving linking it to gst assessment as i said the circular tradings are being caught 2017 18 or 2018 19 you did not hear much of the news about gst frauds but when it came to 1920 you started suddenly listening ki this uh, commissionate has unearthed 1000 crores 100 crores 500 crores numbers were just going up how was this happening it was purely deployment of artificial intelligence the ai was there when 17 18 things were there people did not even suspect ki kuch hoga acha uh, i am into a business i have lot of b2c customers jo credit lete hi nahi hai agar koi mere paas aa gaya bolega chalo aap wo bill ko paad do ek bill mere naam pe de do anyhow you have received the cash for it oh cash mere ko de do i will give you the uh, payment so your books of accounts is also clean and i am purchasing a bill in a normal line no one will be able to catch this but today ai can catch ai is capable of catching uh, how does it happen again uh, detailed uh, process uh, let it keep outside but if i give if i have to give you a simple correlation how does it happens is you search something in the google like you type some name you say you type my name and in the google it will list some of the places where uh, my name was available my item was available how was it coming because someone has done a search engine and various things now which is the one which has to be shown first is like anything you search in google it will give you some 50 60 pages correct but there is a ranking that is associated to the page even simple uh, uh, one level down a common man understanding let's take a football example you know the ranking to the football players how does it come is one is the number of goals that they make but if i am giving a pass of the ball to another person which means i am trusting him the pass number of passes he is receiving makes his rank go up even more that the guy who has a higher rank is giving the ball pass to him will also add to it now bring those kind of analogy back here i already start marking or ranking an attack player we call this as profiling we call this as profiling now i rank these tax payers out of so many tax payers and i'll say hey look this guy is going to be a fraudster now how does he become a fraudster is is various parameters now he being fraudster is one the people dealing with him buyers and suppliers 90% of them are genuine there are some 10% fraudsters in it so now there is a weightage that gets assigned 
So the systems have an ability to choose, do a cherry picking. We call it as profiling. And what they what do they do? Out of all the sorry, out of all the taxpayers, out of all the taxpayers, it will start giving a ranking, like your Google page ranking. Who is most likely to be corrupt or fraud? And who is least likely to be corrupt or fraud? Now, your GST audit assessments, everything will happen even again this basis. By the way, an interesting uh, news. You know, the SSE who is least likely to be fraud will be assigned for GST audits. You know why? There are new officers who have to get trained about what are the books of records to be kept and maintained or what questions to ask, what reconciliations to check. These new officers you assign to these uh, uh, SSEs who are least likely that there would be any errors. What are the two things that are going to happen? First, these officers are completely getting trained about when I go to the next place, what type of reconciliations to be kept. So these officers who do not know, they are also getting trained. And the criteria of audits are also met. No, the, uh, there are advantages. So the, we call, they categorize this as ABC and the assignments of the audits happen. So the fraudulent are the genuine profiles. This profiling happens on multiple parameters, on multiple parameters which are prefed into the system. These parameters are completely prefed into the system. And one other thing, we call these as a machine learning model. We call this as a machine learning model because every time when every time when a when a taxpayer is been, let's say this taxpayer has been selected and the officer looks at the profile and says, look, he is not a fraud. This, this guy is not fraud, but pick this SSE is likely to be fraud. Now the machine will start learning as to, okay, what were the parameters attributes here, which were missing common everything. And it will build all the chain pattern back into it it will build all the pattern into it and make sure that this is going to be the next likely fraud. That is what the machine learnings do, yeah? And we also have another technology called SNA, social network analysis. And pardon me, these are the terminologies uh, which you will be here, yeah, which will be our graph theory uh, technology where it will try to analyze basis a pattern basis a pattern it is going to analyze by the way given that we have a diagram here we have a diagram here one other concept which i want to explain which is going to be used in the officers dashboards now we know graph we know graph right the pie chart, bar, histogram, all those things. We call that graph as two dimensional. Okay, what can be the additional dimension? Onto the graph, I add a color, third dimension, fourth dimension. Today, we have graphs that come in multi dimension. How can there be multi dimension? You know, imagine this line, the thickness of the line will also indicate something. The thickness or width, the size of this will indicate something. So I'm adding more patterns to the graph, giving some information. Today, three dimension graphs are history. Today you pick up any good data analytics uh, uh, tool. The three dimensional graphs is the basic version. How do I give an improved version today? Even in Excel, when, when people prepare uh, uh, charts, they would want to add multiple information looking at it in one go, I will be able to know. Uh, like I want to, let's say, so, Southeast, West, North. Instead of me putting it, there's a color combination letter put. And uh, the increase in the sales, let us give it the thickness of it. And let us 
add the height and width adjustment all these things are taken care in the graph so the graph is communicating without even showing any number or a data to us this is this is what is now being added and developed to the officers users now coming back to the sna theory this sna theory is now applied how are they applied is there is a data analysis system which keeps crawling and looking at the various informations which are there outside like the facebook posts that are happening there are various spends that come on the social medias that you do you will be recognized as a top growing company in uh, some fiki some ci somewhere or the number of employees who are talking in the glass door and the which will indicate the size of yours your share price movement would indicate what you are likely doing in the business you suddenly appear in a uh, in a magazine as a nutrition expert saying that i deal with this or i de i treat these yeah. things yeah. And, and no way you are appearing in your gst profiles or you are appearing in in a profile which is which is very unlikely to be accepted so these data would be flashed on so now you would be wondering uh, in the assessments that happen like various uh, the assessments that are happening right starting from your 59 now the always the assessments i always say which one has to worry is the best judgment assessment because they are really worst judgment assessment it is when these uh, assessments happen like uh, section 63 now they have to assess unregistered persons right so when these assessments happen uh, you will the basis which they will be which is taken is uh, india is really growing economy is growing so your uh, turnover will grow say 14% percent cagr month over month now all those uh, uh, estimates would be built and assessment happens how will the department get the data to catch these unregistered persons because na to 2a na to 1a nothing is there there is information out there in fact in one of the case uh, the last week we have applied for surrendering a registration for a client department immediately called look i was just watching on my screen and it is showing that okay uh, you are a chairman for this association and uh, you have been featuring in producing basically it was into he was in an artist uh, thing you are uh, part of this production house uh, please check the limit uh, for you will only be 20 lakh and uh, were you have you wrongly applied for the registration cancellation Now, even before someone hits a button the information right there was on the screen right there on the screen of the officer saying that this is what you are now imagine that the today the assessments that are happening audits that are happening so the technology is being aiding a lot so this is the sna theory the uh, the social network analysis that happen so i'm just introducing the concepts then we will get on to how section 65 audits are aiming and are doing it <clears throat> then there is an external data that is collated and uh, controlled and reviewed you know you have income tax return your power bill consumption your travel cost the mining and geology royalties that you pay to the government the quantum of the capex that you are deploying these would automatically indicate sorry these would automatically indicate i think i'm not sure whether the screen have uh, system got passed so the these would automatically indicate how much would be the likely turnover of yours no your uh, turnover is indicated by various other external factors that you don't even disclose in your gst r1 or 2b or 3a this is this would sufficient information now people always question and again this uh, this question is there 
uh, I'm sure some of the uh, the uh, faculty would have dealt. What would be the scope of the officer under Section 61? You know, when he is uh, scrutinizing, should he restrict to the verifying the correctness of the written and the information relevant, you know, which is furnished by the taxpayer? Yeah. But when you go to Rule 99, automatically the power has been widened. In Rule 99, it says information available with the officer. There's a change in the wordings between the uh, Section 61 and the Rule 99. Right now, what is the avail information available with the officer? MCA data is there. Between CBDT, CBIC, information exchange is there. Today, the APIs are there with a lot of the government portals. The information out there is available. So this data is available. So be careful. Refunds we have seen uh, at the airports. But now the recent circular introduced saying that we should sanction the refunds and the system should also do the whatever the audits which we need to do has to be done immediately. So the, there are a lot of expectations which are there on implementing more and more uh, artificial intelligence technology while processing of the refunds. Parallelly, the rate rate revision is is being done to ensure there is the inverted dutiness in the in the whole system is being re reduced. So the officers who are uh, uh, basically the TRU, the research uh, division unit department is studying the each of the materials and say where the inverted dutiness is there and where we can reduce including now the um, uh, the solar panels moving from 5 to 12 all those things are again happening so it is the the again one more technology is being implemented right this is what happening now let me come straight to gst one by one starting with your e bill e bill analysis, what we see is e bill portal with a different login. But for the department, there is a different, different login, which is called as comprehensive analytics on e -Webel. Comprehensive analytics of e -Webel. Note, this is not a, once they log in, it is not a theory session. Once they log in, and enter your taxpayer GST number or scan an e bill. There's an information that automatically flows more about it. Automatically flows more about it. Let's start, let's start looking at what are the insights this tool has. This tool, you select a taxpayer, it automatically says between this month to, to this month, GSTR1 data versus eWebill data versus 3B data is so much. There is a gap and it gives multi parameters by taxpayer, by period, or group of taxpayers, jurisdictions, or type of supplies, how much towards tax invoice, whatever the possible combinations that you intend to look system will give you to play around and work on it. It will also give you what are the likely recycled invoices. What do you mean by recycled invoices? Now, what are the invoices where the office, the taxpayer chalo, delivery chalan number dal ke ek material move kar diya. Ek var usko invoice number dal ke material move kar hai. The gap between one invoice number to another invoice number whatever the thing which you can think it is like he is saying that okay this much the moment an invoice is recycled it is a straight evasion of the tax there is a fraud so the first invoice is out of the system if a b2c customer is coming and he is giving a cash if i can recycle that invoice of course the material has to move so I would need an eBay bill. So if I can recycle the first invoice, the second invoice is there. And there are taxpayers who, in the name of cutting competition or cut throughout competition, 
takes the GST as their profit element. मतलब is like they say चलो मैं I am selling at a lower price बिना GST का. Automatically it is like उतना margin बच गया उसको. और bill पड़ा but सरकार को pay नहीं हुआ. Various things. So system is is churning and seeing. Of course they have been blurred for various reasons. So system is churning and seeing these are the recycled invoices. It is also going to churn and say that okay, the misuse is happening by way of reuse of the bills. We know EV bill has two parts, part A and part B. How to how do I make sure that you have this travel between your taxpayer location to the transporter location? You can just move with part A. Now, I move it. In fact, I am not moving to the transporter location, but a customer des destination, and I am filling the part B at a very later point in time with the, for a different material, different item, or a different thing. So, because you know that you can actually recycle something, so again, the recycling happening with half-filled e-wables. The moment they scan the data. it will if i scan by taxpayer it will be saying that okay these are the eva bills generated by a newly registered taxpayer in fact i was uh, privy to some of the reports on the dashboard of the officer registration of this ssc happened two days back today he is generating an eva bill With the twenty lakh value, now imagine when the purchase happened, when the sale happened, and there is no inward uh, evables available to him. So there are frauds that happen. People figure out how to uh, escape from the system, and the system will keep adding to its knowledge database. Ki these are the exceptions. Ab tum pakaro kaise pakarna? Or I have composition taxpayers, and we know the limit is just one and a half crore. or it is service composition but still they are generating eva bills and with a higher turnovers or i am selecting it as odc over dimension cargo but for an over dimension cargo to be there i need to know that this is like i am transferring a power bill uh, sorry a windmill uh, it needs uh, a different size and shape of the vehicle or i'm transporting a big plant and machinery equipment which needs a over dimension i don't need a odc vehicle for transporting kaju or cashew or certain items right so the product type versus the vehicle odc which is chosen sometimes there are genuine errors that happen now but these genuine errors would lead to the penalties system is there to catch this system will also show list of vehicles with recorded as no eva bills so these vehicles are moving without eva bill now the vehicle is moving without eva bill e is gets recorded like how in the next slide i'll say the system will show system will give you an indication that okay there are early cancellation of the eva bills are happening you have chosen the distance less than 100 kilometers जनरेट करने के दो घंटे में ही आपने कैंसिल कर दिया चांसेस ऑफ इट यू हैव डिलीवर्ड इट एंड यू आर कैंसिलिंग इट अगेन टू रिसाइकल द इनवॉइस एंड फॉर 200 हंड्रेड किलोमीटर द टाइम दे लुक एट इट इज फोर आवर्स सो विद इन दिस पीरियड इफ द जनरेशन एंड कैंसिलेशन आर हैपनिंग अगेन चांसेस ऑफ इट बींग रिसाइकल दिस आर ऑल पैरामीटर्स विच आर डन इन द सिस्टम्स and uh, uh, we don't get to hear any of this in the sessions because we are only focusing on the gst knowledge side but it is important that you should also know what are the parameters on which the systems are uh, designed and kept then if an eva bill is getting cancelled in the last mile so we know 24 hours the time for the eva bill processing but eva bills generate ho gaye and last minute mein cancel ho rahe then again it is an early warning system ki kuch gadbad hai sometimes the destination is like i will generate the eva bill 
uh, the origin pin code is uh, 60001 destination pin code is also 60001 and uh, honestly the distance will not be more than two and a half three kilometers but it is selected as 100 kilometers so then again you clearly know that the vehicle is doing some multiple trips to ensure that uh, you are not caught in that routes and some recycling happen or e-wheels are getting extended for short distances generally the extension is uh, anticipated if there are roids or if there is uh, uh, some calamities or if there are floods there are rains and unable to travel during the transit i extend but it is a short distance there is an extension which is happening now you may ask that any of this which is happening is genuine of course the reasons which have listed which have listed there would be genuine but what will happen when you do when you do this you know, when any of the things which are happening and sorry any of these things which are happening and you are doing this and you are doing this in your profile screening there is a rating that is coming up there is a rating that is coming in your profile so this is the next thing which you will be seeing live on the gst portal red amber green where next to your gst registration you will see some color combination for example if you book a ola uber next to the driver you will see some rating 4.5 4.73 agar kisi ke do hai then you will think twice if you are booking uh, that vehicle and you want to uh, send your daughter or spouse uh, to somewhere na bola ke chodo isko chodo then dusra cab book karenge right this is also similar so you will start looking at you will no longer say that okay i will buy from this vendor usse pehle bologe ki uska ranking kitna dikh raha now this ranking is going to become public this ranking is going to become public and that is what is going to happen right so the things that pop up on the popping up on the screen would indicate that where do you rank and what is that likely that happen and the ranking of yours go worse and worse it doesn't not just impact your ranking it would also impact the ranking both of your customers and the suppliers is like i said in that example of that goal post is like if you are giving a ball pass to someone you are trusting him that he will put it into the goal right but when you have been categorized as a fraud which means some of the transaction of yours either it is going as a fraud further or it is being carried from somewhere so your rankings get impacted and these ranking systems is getting built inside so you got to be aware of it then vahan portal integrations today again the vehicles when they are moving like as i said an officer who is standing there and stopping the vehicle automatically on his screen many things get flashed vehicle cross the toll the fast tag today everyone uses fast tag and the fast tags are helping a lot of the information by the way the just off the line conversation um, after the implementation of the fast tag the rec the loan recovery for the banks have increased like how like they give a vehicle loan and this vehicle after some time uh, he moves out from this city goes somewhere anywhere but now in the fast tag the all the data today it is all api world once the data is there in one place it can be consumed so you you keen and say that uh, i want to watch as a bank i will say i want to watch for this the moment it crosses the tolls today across the tolls that you will find all these caesars so they know that the vehicle cross the toll the message flashes on that uh, caesar this guy will go ahead and stop the vehicle and say look you didn't pay the uh, emi either you drop the vehicle here and go or you pay the money and unfortunately there will be some customers who are sitting there he has no choice he will do likewise a vehicle is moving and it cross the toll and it is going in one direction officer automatically flashes hey look 
as per his evable portal this vehicle either it is not even registered for traveling or this is traveling in this direction or evable time has expired already or the quantity and capacity this vehicle can carry is this but the evable value is is so much or <coughs> it's not even existent the vehicle number is not existent in this uh, location you know various information and not mismatching it just flashes on it hey look stop this vehicle and ask what what is it doing officer is stopping with this kind of information the chance of he picking a right fraudulent vehicle is substantial higher versus randomly stopping any vehicle that is going through right now imagine how much intelligence is is being given so making it the tax collection system more efficient see the purpose of the administrative body like all our the cbic is just they are implementing administering uh, the parliament is law making but it is being administered by our officers the objective of the officers is the right implementation but unfortunately it is more so about the very strict kind of implementations and to their the tools and softwares are there to actually aid them a lot so better be careful so even this integration is done out there real and all those things which are which i am talking i am not bringing any fancy uh, statements or any imaginary thing this is real which is being there and what happens when an officer uh, stops a vehicle there is a mobile app for the officer in the mobile app he has two options either he can enter the evable number or he can just scan it and what happens once he does it automatically on his screen what reflects is see the evable whether it is cancelled rejected or expired what happened to this will automatically be knowing he has an option to automatically update it to his evable 03 inspection report it will say whether this gstn is it in watch list do you need to extend you know we have the multiple stages in 67 you can just stop the vehicle you can also inspect the documents you can also further inspect the goods when and necessary so it will also give them an alert it will say whether part b is updated or not updated and we all know one good thing under evable if the vehicle has been verified once it need not be verified for the same content items and everything so number of times if verif verification happened it will be shown so the basic information has been shown then it will show if there are any tax evasion prone commodities which are there it will show it will show a watch list of reports a host of reports it is going to show up on the screen just to name few or on the sample it would be showing that the list of ev from the vehicle perspective okay from the vehicle number uh, perspective it will be showing the list of evables which have been generated with the same vehicle number how many evables which have been generated how much quantity that existing if there is more than one evable which has been generated with the same number or if the vehicle has been detained in last any 24 hours if there is any evable not generated but it is carrying the material so it will give an option to update there is no evable available to it then it will give you a search the taxpayer it will say it will it is like a verb it is like action is saying search the taxpayer or the transporter or the products it will say which of this you you need to do it will with a color combination it will show up and whenever it is highlighting something is like even in our audit reports our sa 700 if you are writing something and you want to draw attention we you, you put it under km then sometimes in the bold the moment something coming up the bold you click on it the information is completely available in fact it is going to say that it is unlikely say four different hsns being packed bundled and moving in that containment is very unlikely 
it is like i am a mobile store mobile phone dealer and i am selling a mobile phone there is a hsn let's say 8704 is updated and 093 is updated and some stationary item 4905 is updated like okay one invoice having this three unlike unless otherwise i am like a big bazaar or uh, someone it will say that okay search the products you know system is intelligent enough to say what you have to do so it is going to give you a word actionable verb so the moment it is scanning it is saying do this and in fact i would also always train my staff that okay we should learn having the communication with an action because it's an easy to understand and tell what you have to do that's what the systems are actually doing and it is also giving other analytics the moment you it hits a taxpayer it says okay this taxpayer is having abnormal growth in the turnover or the taxpayers with more than four hsn chapters in the eva bill his outward supplies are far greater than inward supplies it's like his purchases are happening or the sales are not happening so likely there are suppressions or inward supplies are uh, far greater than outward supplies vice versa anything could happen or the taxpayers all his outward is more towards unregistered persons or all towards his purchases towards unregistered persons so these are like into a watch list that is where the moment in the list of the taxpayers in fact i haven't put one of the screenshot because it has data so in out of all the things it will highlight okay these are the taxpayers okay you will have to be careful whenever the eva bill movement happening to these taxpayers it should show and the hsn rate the which the uh, which has been chosen the hsn rate which has been chosen for that item vis-a-vis -vis the classifications that are available or the number of cancellations that are happening summarize it with hsn and give an analytics information saying that look this data is happening so system is feeding the data and please note whenever i am saying system is feeding the data it is not dumping the data today you don't like let's say you don't want someone to read some audit report or some some information you dump it with too much of the numbers it is like you know there are uh, there are some cs who as a part of uh, the representation service ek chota sa notice aaya and let's take uh, say 164 ka hai now uh, i am replying to the department saying that chalo 164 you don't look in for the financial year 1718 and 1819 okay now uske upar main 60 page ka reply banaunga some 30 case loss code karunga i will extract some information from various places and put it there and submit the likeliness of that reply to be read by the officer is one in hundred not even one in ten because it's like you are boring the boring someone to death you don't want someone to read anything you should generally dump it but today these analytics the information so much which i have shared so far don't think that this much information will be dumped it will screen and give exception and not as a table or as information but a graph and information it when i say graph we call it as infographics where the information is presented in a graphical way indicating what it means the moment you see a red light you will stop correct so it's indicating someone is saying stop so the color combination the thickness all those things will actually indicate so this is what happening on the evable side now let's get into the audits that are happening the department law audits that are happening under section 65 how they are happening what are the officers uh, doing what tools have been aided with the officers uh, to do the analysis there are trainings by the way there are trainings that are happening uh, in fact i am part of one of the training institutions where the officers are are, are sent 
to get trained on understanding numbers graph and how to analyze the data it's like a workshop which is being conducted after the training uh, let me tell you both positive sides and negative side uh, uh, at least around 60 70% of the officers are not aware what i'm right now talking positive side for you the negative side the officers are coming empowered empowered to handle the data the likelihood an officer asking you saying that this is the adt01 you have you can choose to do the reconciliation give me the information or share me the access of your say quickbooks zoho login that you have on the cloud or the tally data just send me the backup i will take care of it rest and when they are saying it they are super confident i will handle it not that they know that erp well they have a tool the moment i load in plug in press a button in fact uh, uh, i recently we have built a tool called tally on wheels where is like for the statutory audits and internal audits for preparing schedule 3 financials where you press that a button it will automatically prepare financials it will say exceptions all those things likewise for the officers there are tools we call this as uh, the saas tools where the data analytics are done and we as a tax practitioners the chartered accountants we use power bi recently so even mm, thankfully ica is conducting good code good number of courses on power bi or uh, the m language of the excel where it is going to kind of power queries so which will automatically do you don't need to do you don't need to know pivot or anything so everything is set you should only say that okay the, this client is using sap or oracle financials then i will say okay fine i will do a visit audit i will come to your place i am coming with a laptop you will have to give me access to your sap i will ask you do you have any z reports if not okay do give me this t codes and you are using name password as an auditor not even i don't need to do an entry and i just enter press a button it will connect pull the data whatever it is required and it doesn't show you any data it will give you a graph or an information and the graph or the information is what multi dimensional it is multi dimensional starting from a two digit histogram it is like you can see a graph which is here there is one histogram and there is one line there is some strength everything is indicating various information so this information is fed and available the officers are using it some of the officers if your officer is not using trust me 3 years 4 years later the officers will be doing it income tax we have faceless assessment gst when faceless assessment happens this is what going to happen though the department is still working out and yet to implement what we have like e invoice department is working on two more activities that has to happen like real time now sales is being sent for the invoice but the cbdt is working can there be a possibility of real time tds reporting whatever you have done a purchase bill i want you to cut the tds and report it immediately you can pay whenever you want to pay and file the return the the reported information will automatically go to traces and your tds returns will prepare automatically like how the e invoice data is moving to gstr1 automatically that's happened that's uh, that is under consideration and the feasibility and everything is being studied first one second one even more little uh, worrisome you should be considering is this softwares generalized accounting software gas which are standard like when i say standard is your tally sap and everyone are asked they have been asked to prepare 
department compatible data information system saying okay i don't need your data for the purpose of audit you give me in a structured way see go back to the history of the return filing system pehle zamane mein kya ho raha tha we used to stand in the queue collect the it forms and they used to give for one person 10 forms only will give like that you fill that form and go and submit where they used to do a data entry second it, it has moved to a system where that the form is filled online then it moved to a system where it is like xml and json i will pick and fill so today earlier the officers has to enter the information in their system today no one enters the data in their system information comes automatically like fries from your accounting softwares the data will be going automatically the way they want now these are the two not real not reality but there are two under consideration and this is the next likely thing that's going to happen when i say next likely you always wait 2 3 years right then what else happening so the officers have been given with the cat tools computer assisted audit tools they have been given these tools to start doing the gst audits these tools will give you this visualization multi dimensional visualizations and a graph indicates speaks a lot without knowing without you don't even need to get into any information right then the interconnected data is available on the screen of the officer on the screen of the officer who is doing audit it is automatically available 26 as me kitna tha income tax returns me kitna hai today if you log into 26 as i'm sure most of you have seen gst at 3b values have been auto populated i'm not, if you have not seen please go log in and see you will you will find your gst returns value in your 26 as this information is is auto populated on the screen of the officer eweable sales value is pop populated you really don't have the eweable data because eweable data uh, like more than 6 months you will not be able to download and earlier the download was only one day one day but now they have extended the period but from the nic portal eweable data has gone boom you did not have a copy but officers do have that access to that data so you you got to be worried e invoice you can uh, generate e invoice the data which is coming into gst r1 you can select one button you can say delete all and do whatever you want to do but that data did not go off the copy is there it is visible whenever you are making purchases uh, which are there in your it return versus 2a expected uh, your 2a would have the purchase value both goods and your uh, services so what you do not have is your depreciation which is uh, the uh, compensated by your capex purchase what you do not have is the payroll which is again compensated by the pr department which is giving the payroll information i'm not sure how many of you are aware not aware you just tell me any company name whether it is infosys reliance any company name i can tell you how many employees are there last 12 months what is the churn what is the payroll bill what is the average bill the information is available online so the information exchange happen not like an employee wise but that data is available so likewise the data is available on the screen now we have the issue on this royalty so department just goes to mining and geology saying that how many of them are paying royalty okay these many people are paying royalty so it's obvious question whether they are uh, uh, paying uh, rcm or not that's a thing which they can check but more importantly they will say that okay look you have extracted this many boulders this many materials where, where did you make the sale because when you pay the royalty you pay royalty basis the tonnage of the extraction so the tonnage multiplied with the value at which you have to sell versus should reflect in the gst r1 and department right now not laid their hands on their power to collect statistics 
the section 150 151 those are still uh, uh, sleeping but tomorrow once that comes in i don't know to what extent and where that would be used and uh, once they are used it is like a misused by the other persons then the data analysis gives an expense audit what is the obvious thing is kitna credit aapne liya vendor wise to ye mein hai ki nahi how many vendors are filing late all those things but more importantly more importantly data analysis is done on expenses without gst sometimes you might be wonder you will be asked by the officers please give me list of expenditures where there is no gst an explanation why there is no gst give me vendor wise so the rcm is when i lay hands it is a good cake walk uh, when i from the department because 1718 ka audit ab chal raha hai agar if i put the rcm levy liability now you are anyhow paying through drc03 the chance of you getting a credit is is not there though you may uh, argue saying that the 164 time limit raises say red with 313f that self tax invoice raised now it's into getting into litigation but the chances of how many picking it and doing it is 1% rest 99% it's a straight revenue eweable leakage is a straight revenue and like itc was always carrying forward and it was not a cost but these automatically becomes a cost and the revenue to the department so wherever the revenues are there to the department the audit emphasis is high and when they are doing this when they are doing this they are also parallelly checking they are also parallelly checking do you have any blocked credits do you have any capital credits all the classifications that you are doing is automatically checked though there is an option given in gstr 9 while filing your table 6b segregation between input input services and capital goods Cap rep reporting of the capital goods was optional and in the first year the input and input services uh, uh, is been said that okay it's all optional but i would always suggest you should do it today department knows what is your profit margin you will say profit margin gstr 3b se profit margin kahan se milega i don't report npgp ratio but the quantum of taxes that you are paying through cash the tax paid in cash divided by gross tax liability will indicate the profit because the value added only you will be paying what if you have a capital purchases so that means you are to that extent you are not undisclosing so if you are disclosing it rightly the chances of the system making that uh, you as a fraud and typically when i say fraud is a likely likely uh, the damage in the frauding statement so will be less so better report it even before they start the audit certain information is flashed on their system even before they have started the audit certain information is flashed on the system i'm sure like someone was asking a question on 16 4 they will say that this guy has filed his march 18 return in the month of october okay if at least 17 18 was an exception because the time limit was extended uh, uh, till march so let's say march 18 uh, 19 report after september so utna credits usko ineligible is straight you get uh, uh, a good chunk the moment in uh, itc became ineligible so which means you did not pay the tax to that extent interest bhi aa gaya interest is computed automatically 2a or 2b versus 3b this much he has taken this much is less so his audit report is pre filled i'm sure all of you would have gone through section 65 audits and adt 02 has come the common points in adt 02 is not that the officer is wanting to give but he has uh, he is helpless his audit report will come with the pre filled certain points ki itna points to tumhara audit report mein aana hi hai me as a system mein de raha hu ki itna ye galat hua hai uske baad whatever you find out it is a value add kar lo 
these are the due dates including the extended due dates with various notifications lay october august 17 was extended say by five five days all those things system calculates and uh, says these are the extended dates itna interest he has to pay and they don't make mistake like they don't calculate interest on itc uthake only on the cash portion they compute interest and put a table automatically the officer ko kuch karne ki zarurat nahi system does it and put it shows up on the screen so there are chances ek to hum log ki taraf se hi gaya hai rishta yeah so there are chances that the someone is being asked for to pay the taxes obviously is it is it is done by the system system also gives the likely blocked credits uh, blocked credits kahan se milega is like where do i know how do the system know that uh, 175 purchases of mine with him he only has gst or 2a system is flashing that let's say i am buying some items from coffee day coffee day is a staff welfare coffee shop and everything which has been done the gstr1 of coffee day table 12 showing the hsn items indicating that the buyer who is selling uh, manufacturing uh, uh, say dell laptops or some laptops and selling the, those purchases are going to be under 17 5b no uh, that is to that extent it is intelligent it is also going to say these credits have been availed by these suppliers who are inactive or cancelled so saying that okay you can press the compliance of 16 subsection 2 clause c happened or not like uh, litigation is litigation but the information is made available to automatically raise demands even before they start the audit on the screen it flashes this is the audit of the previous year say 17 18 or 18 19 and chances could be 18 19 ka audit hua hai 17 18 ka audit ab le rahe ho sakta hai and this is the audit adt 02 went to scn scn or the demands that are raised these are the outstanding demands system will automatically say that the compliance of rule 42 for this client has not been done the rule 42 compliance of this client has not been done how is like there is some exempted turnover that is reported the like input tax credit being common credits likely would be there the value of the credits that is reported in 4d of gstr 3b could be nil all possible permutations would be happening and system when it is applying it would be blindly applying on the value that is reported in your 31c as an exempted turnover in 3b and it would say that this much is a likely uh, rule 42 reversal that's going that should be happening which has not happened so this information is auto filled please note at the start of the audit the information is available to the officer so you got to be careful so you will have to ensure that when you are doing an audit and suggesting someone that whether this has been taken care or not yeah the transaction audit analysis when there is a large data dump the large data dump is automatically analyzed and given special audits importance has gone up almost all the states have given an empanelment and in the empanelment they are saying that the ca or the cma who have a certificate course of your fafd or data analytics or uh, dis or whatever they would be given the preference no so department believes rely, relies on this heavily saying that i want as i just don't want a cma or ca i want a data analyst in fact this i want it because that's what law mandates but what i want is this they are explicitly stating and that's what they are hiring you should be careful and you know the engagements the regular engagements are once in when when it is required but the data analytics engagement is like they are kind of a retainers they they are hired for 
doing the round the clock services for the department so you got to move one step above and when you are finalizing advising to the clients you got to ensure you use some tools so from the taxpayer perspective your advice to the taxpayers is start adopting technology see nothing can beat the human mind or human intelligence but at least the mundane tasks can be taken care and the department can which are likely to which are evident can also be automatically preempted and caught what is that you should advise or recommend is do an automation possible today every erp permits to on a click of a button generate e invoice do i'm not saying that uh, do not use uh, gepp or the nic portal generate json upload i'm not saying that you shouldn't do it but wherever possible why don't you explore that this is automated e bill generation you know the penalty under 129 is kind of a criminal honestly it is daylight robbery 200% of the tax imagine if someone a guy selling uh, uh, these mobile phones and uh, he his each phone let's say 50000 10 phones he packed and is going for delivery uh, 5 lakh uh, with a tax rate of 18% 90000 rupees is the thing some urgency something even will not generated They're like i mean i'm talking about unintentional errors or he someone has given him a wrong available something happened officer catching him and saying a penalty of 1 lakh 80 thousand can i appeal is there a chance courts will not agree because there's a gross mistake only when there is cognizable differences that's fine and we also have the circular 63 which can take care but leaving that one lakh eighty thousand rupees penalty for a five lakh bill how much time and effort he has to put in to recoup that loss what would be the fate of that employee who have not done your advice should be that it should be automated what if the e bill is expiring and the material did not deliver did not reach the destination can i press off a button can i renew it can i cancel it all those things should happen on press of a button it's not should be something one will be doing manually your advice always should be as strong as automate you know, automate wherever is possible automate now when i say automate not necessary that you should be the one who is implementing this automation when i say automate you should only be saying that look there are out there tools available now what are the tools the office uh, ssc will ask okay can you do it you don't need to there are so many application service providers who are enabling doing it now some may ask okay at what price i would always say do not bargain on the price when you are implementing in fact you should set aside a budget for the automation it is not a profit center to say that okay i will do but the cost of litigation the cost of non-compliance under gst is pretty high do it automatically you know, generation of the JSON should be system driven. And when you are filing a return, let's say in the month of June, I'm filing uh, the May return. Do not look at standalone May return. The way you should do it, I should have a system where I always reconcile the books data with the filed data. The data which has already been filed, I'm talking about say June return when you're filing in July, April May, which has already been filed versus what is currently there in the book should also get audited and included in your June return, either for debit notes, credit note, cancellation, amendment, inclusion, all those things should happen. That is what you should advise the taxpayer that this is what you should happen. And if you are also providing an return filing assisting services, you should find a way that these tools are there to aid you. In fact, I always suggest that while filing uh, returns or the compliance services, you should be able to generate GSTR 9 and 9C on a monthly basis. As if the business is shut today, April to June itself is the turnover or the period, prepare 9 and see whether any values are likely to come into part 5, table uh, 10 or 11 of GSTR 9. Anything that you need to adjust, do it now. Why do you want to carry forward? All those things have to be 
considered and done. Likewise, on the sales, put it on the ITC side. Obvious thing what people are doing is only looking at uh, 2A versus 3B, right? This is what is the, uh, when we say uh, we do automate or anything, this is what which is being done, but not just enough. That's not enough. Do you have a system to check whether the input tax credits availed is valid or invalid? In fact, some of the uh, earlier session, someone was asking, okay, I'm availing this credit. Is it eligible or not eligible? Either some food bill or some a lift bill, 17.5 C, D, whether it's a works contract, not works contract. Can it, can the system automatically tell me whatever is done, at least expenditure classification? Can it wet whether I have complied with 16 subsection two? You know, the four conditions, but three provisos was there. Not that was not sufficient to two A got introduced. So you know only when it is there in two B you take. Now that was not sufficient. Now two B A was introduced. So the new new section thirty eight when God knows when it gets implemented. Once it is implemented, if you are not using system, you are going to miserably fail in working capital management purchases and ITC is there in one period, utilized in completely in different period, right? Timely reversal of input tax credit, compliance of rule 42, 43, categorization between input input services, or advising that which are the suppliers from whom you have to buy, whom you should not buy. All these advices that you need to do to the taxpayer, you got to expand the scope. This is not only the scope or the scope. This is like given, this is expected, this is has to happen. So something more value add has to happen, whether uh, whether it is being done house, done in house, or outsource, or system driven, whatever. But these are the things to be play being made in place on a timely basis. And again, the as I said, the department is going to look more from the reverse charge. So on a proactive basis, you should also be knowing the reverse charge, likely reported reverse charge where it is auto-populated and those which have not been auto-populated how do i find out so can it be automatically be found out and can i do especially payments made to google amazon facebook online so no control import of services so it is like you will you will have to the software expenses unnoticed or the transfer price secondary adjustment you would while filing the uh, returns gstr 1 and 3b you have taken whatever which was there in the uh, which is recognized by the book but when the tp audit happens you have done the secondary adjustment where various uh, thing so where where is that considered the secondary adjustments that are happening because the that year is everything is over so all those things are also very important the knowledge of the business and likelihood where you will be failing in what you have to do is also very important Lastly, which I would want to uh, advise in the refunds, when the refunds are being claimed, when the refunds are being claimed, today the refunds uh, are going to become stricter and stricter. And uh, after VKC footwear, where the much debate happened, whether the input services eligible, not eligible. So we all know now the, uh, the current Bible for refunds is circular 125 where the classification of all the I, I, uh, claims which we are making is very important. Second, the classification of the HSN wise is very important. So which means I, I should have the data being fed into the system. Supporting documents needs to be uploaded. Can it be automated? Data that is to be taken is GSTR one and two years a basis. Most of the people who process refunds using department utility, when they upload the JSON, they will get an error. They really don't know how to debug that error and uh, do, especially that the invoice number starting with 013. And when I enter into the Excel, that zero got truncated, went off, and uh, uh, the data is not matching with the portal information that is available. Or I am using an invoice which has been amended by the SSC at a later point in time. So I'm seeing GSTR one value is matching, but still it is showing error. So I should pick an amended value. There are practical challenges. So one should be knowing that. And there is a possibility that you will get a maximum refund 
where sometimes I can, the period can be anything between one financial year to other financial year also, either quarterly, monthly. Can I club some odd months? Because say in an inverted duty structure, see what matters is the timing of the purchases which you are doing, the percentage of the inverted duty uh, sales to the total sales, all those things play to get a maximum refund. Maximum refund is a tax planning. It is not an evasion or anything. It is permitted in the law. So is there a way where that you can simulate and create iterations of that and do some activity? So these are kind of a, a taxpayer support activities. Are you able to do it or not? So friends, these are the various points which I thought one should be aware during the assessment. What is happening at the department side, uh, how they are doing and uh, in my perspective, what one should be doing it. Uh, that's what I have uh, covered. Hope this session has a value to you. And uh, any questions, uh, feel free to ask. And I should uh, thank uh, uh, the host, uh, uh, Sarav Bhai and previous speakers for giving an opportunity to share some of my views and the knowledge that I have on the technology advancements that are happening on the department. So, thank you. Thank you, uh, Vilom uh, Anyone having question, please uh, unmute yourself and you can ask the question. This being a session where uh, um, no case loss, I nothing. So I'm sure the SSCs, uh, the taxpayers really now don't know okay, what to ask. The only question is like, okay, how much is this is real? But the answer is this is real. Whatever I have shared is nothing. Mm, trust me, nothing is exaggeration. Nothing is unreal. This is real. Sir, in GST, we have to be law driven along with the technology driven. Not only law will, doesn't suffice only. Yes. I, sir, any, anything you would like to add? Sir, uh, whatever you deliberated, that was really fantastic and mind-opening. And one thing I would like to say, though there were no case laws in your session, but, uh, sir, we have to uh, believe now that above CGST Act, there is one GST and Act. So <laughs> we have to follow that Act also. True, and that right? Act surpasses all other acts. So <laughs> we have to understand the technology and the practical aspect of the application of this law. Agreed. When we are talking about GSTR 2A, sir, when we are talking about real-time information, the practical problem which we are facing during audits is that the departmental officers have some outdated data also. Correct. And then we have to explain them by giving our data to them. True, that true, is very... one problem. In case of fake invoicing, when we are giving them real-time information of fast tech data or trucks, still they are not accepting it and passing on SCNs. Correct. They are not believing on, believing on in their own uh, database or their own uh, technology. So this is the irony of the system. So Agreed. like our earlier speaker said that the law is basically made for or trimmed for offenders. Earlier, we had the belief that uh, everyone is uh, innocent until proven guilty. But now, everyone is guilty unless proven innocent. This is the approach of the law, sir. What is happening yeah. these days? Yes, I would agree, sir. Uh, everyone in the, this is again system driven, everyone is treated as a fraud unless proved otherwise. In yes, fact, sir. Attitude, the approach to the design or the audits assessment is, is not a right approach, but you got to prove to be yourself as innocent, otherwise you are fraud. But ideally, it should have been otherwise saying that everyone, like when we go for an audit, we are we are, we are clear, we are, we are not a bloodhounds, we are watchdogs. Unless otherwise, if something is going wrong, we are getting laying hands and saying that, yes, okay, this is fraud. So the, that starting mindset in the GST audit assessments is is little different. So be aware, be cautious. 
even in case of uh, if we take if we leave aside audit assessments we take case of fake invoicing or any other things database is being received from various commissionerates and dgcis so the moment a name appears in that notice that person is uh, convicted on that day itself show cause notice is sure to come we you are safe if no coercive action is taken true so that is the thing sir and your deliberation was really my opening and i think questions are not flowing because people are not able to uh, <laughs> come out of this uh, trauma so <laughs> thank you thank you so thank you so much sir for your deliberations it's always Hello. a pleasure listening to you it was uh, informative this session was informative so it is a good information for all the participants uh, question uh, arising is uh, not expected yeah very much informative and very nice thanks anu gopal ji thank you umesh ji thank you umesh ji yeah. now i would request uh, c and navin singhal ji to give a vote of thanks to uh, venu gopal ji thank you so much pallavi uh, i would just like to say one thing in this world of apis and upis everyone knows that technology is the backbone but venu gopal sir knows the backbone of technology so that is why no questions were asked and uh, it's the second time i am uh, getting this honor to thank ca uh, uh, venu gopal sir thank you sir for enriching us with immense knowledge uh, more than 150 participants have been enriched today and uh, all of us are looking for more interactions with you in coming time thank you so much sir thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you everyone for attending the seminar stop the recording pallavi <laughs>